house that's going to follow a cloud. Yeah, literally, the cloud is not there. So you know that one of the biggest marks of revival is there's money? One of the biggest marks of revival is that there's money. Because of them, it's going to like burn the Bible Belt and it's to a crisp and they're done with religion. Oh my goodness! Oh, heresy Hound has spoken she has. yet again. Yes. Hey everybody, welcome to Hit, Hit the, the Bar. Bar. Steve Kozar. Paulette Kozar. And Lucy Kozar. How you doing, Lucy? She's got a little turtleneck on today. She's looking very uh, chipper. <laughs> yeah, not really. I had to wake her up to put her on my lap. Oh, i got to have something on the screen here. I... Yeah, we just... Goof we, that just, up. we just hit the bar quickly here. Yeah. So, welcome to Hit the Bar. This is the show where we talk about what we are going to watch, and we hit the space bar, and we critique it, we compare it to what the Bible says. We used to be a part of just about every weird church you can think of. Yeah. And we went through a long process of trying to figure stuff out, and now we like helping other people figure stuff out. And if you don't like it, you know, that's fine. But this is some of the stuff that we've learned, and we encourage you to watch the whole thing all the way through. And kind of get your Bibles out and go along with us, if, yeah. you, if you want to. Lucy may have something to say at the end. Yeah, because she, she has a tendency to chime in. She has a tendency to pronounce judgment upon <laughs> the, the doctrine. The said. The said doctrine. <laughs> so, a couple of weeks ago, we did a video with Todd White. Realized that you're actually leading people to hell. Wow. Wow. He was kind of introducing the new church, That's right. the merger between... William Hinn's Risen Nation Church and his ministry of lifestyle Christianity. That video is really important if you haven't seen it. But what we're going to watch now is from that same service, that same morning, the very first sermon that, that William Hinn gave at this new church. And it's long, and this video we're making is going to be even longer. And uh, You need a shout out to all the campuses. You know what, before I give a shout out, I just need to have another drink of water. <laughs> Mmm, that is so delicious. See, Lucy just turned her head right now. Yeah. Hey, shout out to all my <clears throat> <laughs> shout out to all of our awesome campuses all over the world. We just love you guys. We're so excited about what God's doing in all of your lives. There you go. We're gonna have an awesome time here together. We're just so excited about what God's gonna do. That's all I got. <laughs> That's all right? he's got. Yeah, okay, so so let's but just we do we do have chocolate with us. We have chocolate and we've got we encourage water. Whatever and I've it got takes. Lucy because she she comforts me. This what? is going to be a real hard one. Just I'm I'm letting you know. You can put it on pause. So you can go get your own chocolate or your own dog or cat. You know what we need to be reminded of? What hubris? Hubris. <laughs> hubris. Uh, There's going to be a lot of that today. Yes, excessive pride or self confidence. There we go. In a Greek tragedy, excessive pride toward or defiance of the gods, leading to nemesis. That's the Official. Official, more detailed. Okay. Um, you know what? As long as I got this up, uh, I made a video about eight, nine, ten months ago about all the pastors who use the uh, the verse about without a vision, the people perish. And they Even use... non-pastors. I'm ahead of you. You're, you're way I... ahead of me. This is the beginning of the video I show some motivational people using this verse. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But this is why in Proverbs it says, where there's no vision... Huh? I heard it. This guy's like a, you see, it says recruit. Yeah. It's, I don't know, it's like insurance or multi-level marketing or something. Huh? People perish. people perish. When there's no vision, people perish. So what happens is people don't have a vision for where they're going, so people perish. What does that mean? <laughs> if you cannot see ahead where you choose to go, if you do not have a vision of what you like to create your life as, then where are you going? It's like being on a ship, leaving the harbor without a destination. Make your dreams come true! Okay, so I, I show all these motivational people, and then I show all these Christian pastors who misuse the verse okay. in exactly the same way. I'm just going to put a little bit of it here. There are those who keep the law. Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint. But blessed is he who keeps the law. A few more. Where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained. But happy is he who keeps the law. 
Where people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. This simple little verse is about obeying God's word and listening to God's word, the Bible. This has nothing to do with your imagination or a vision that you get in your head. This is about what God has said, not what you think in your own mind. Okay, so... That's kind of important. That's really important. <laughs> there are a number of verses. Uh, Justin Peters started a series called I, uh, It Doesn't Mean What You Think It Means or I... I don't it's know. A, it's the quote from, um, you know, the sword fighter guy in that movie with Billy Crystal. And oh, yeah, Princess Bride. Princess Bride. Yeah. You keep using that word, but I don't think yeah. it means what you think <laughs> yeah, it means. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. He's got a series, and he's not done with it yet, but there are just these verses that get misused over and over again. And it's really, uh, it's like malpractice. If you're a pastor, you're, really your primary job is to explain, to interpret, to pull the meaning out of the Bible. That's called exegesis. You don't insert your own meaning into it. That's eisegesis. So these guys, who are some of the biggest pastors in the world right now, Rick Warren, he does the same thing. They all misuse this verse. Well, the reason I think they do it is because they don't really care about what the Bible says. They may think they do in their own minds, but they just keep repeating the same things that they've heard from other pastors. Okay. I, so you know, how's this tying into what we're going to do today? This is what we're going to see with Pastor William Hinn. Oh, I, that's right. I'm already off track. See, we're making this up as we go. I want to read a little bit of his qualifications, why he is the pastor now of this new church that was a merger between Todd White and... Lifestyle Christianity and his yeah. own church. William is the senior pastor of Risen Nation Church alongside his wife, Emily. What does that mean? Does that mean his wife is also the pastor? That's what it does Kinda mean. Kind of sounds like mm -hmm. it. That's not biblical. Anyway, their hearts are to see a generation run wholeheartedly after Jesus and lead a church that desires above all else to have a house for him. William has served in ministry from the time he was young under his father, Pastor William Hinn. During his early 20s, he began directing large-scale ministry events for both his uncle, Pastor Benny Hinn, and Todd White. So his background is in running large-scale events for mm -hmm. Benny Hinn and for Todd White. He also served a, a, as a personal assistant to Todd White. We mentioned this in our previous video. Mm -hmm. Going to cure your luggage, Mr. White? I don't know what he did exactly. but So since he was in his... Uh, I think like 23, 24 years old maybe from what I can remember. Maybe 25 years old at the oldest. All he's done has been a personal assistant for Todd White. Before that, he was running events for Benny Hinn. Now he's a pastor. And what we're going to see here, and I don't mean to seem uh, harsh just for the sake of, you know, I disagree with his theology, therefore I'm just going to pick at him because I want to. He's going to misuse the Word of God over and over again. And we actually did uh, this whole show, really, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Kind of uh, last night and this morning, we right. went through it. And it's going to take a while. Um, yeah, so here's the background. He and Emily started Risen Nation in 2014, which started as a worship movement until it ultimately became a church on August 25th of 2019. We should have read this before our previous one. Remember, you said, well, what is Risen Nation? Is it a church? I right. said, I don't really know exactly because it started as a worship thing. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't been a church very long at all. Mm -hmm. And now it merged with Lifestyle Christianity, mm -hmm. which is that big building that Todd White purchased a couple of years earlier, which had the blessing of Kenneth Copeland. Yes. You read through the Old Testament. Kenneth Copeland has taught me so much. And don't you ever say I did. I, I, you guys can think what you want. There's people that have said, I've had partners that are partners with Lifestyle. They're like, well, now that we know that you're in cahoots with this false prophet, we don't want to partner with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel bad for you. I do. I don't, I don't need your partnership. I will probably insert. I'm sure you <laughs> will. Uh, they have three beautiful children. And they, they, they are eager to see people believe, behold, and become like Jesus. Wow, that's a tall order. Yeah. So, I'm going to open this up in iMovie so I don't have to worry about the internet messing up. And I, I think I'm going to start from the very beginning. He does say a few things, just kind of, you know, greetings and stuff. I'm going to try to... Oh, this is where he honors everybody. Yeah. And this is supposed to be a church All right. service. Stay standing God's for house. I know the buckets are being passed, but just lift your hand. So, when Todd was speaking, 
he was actually giving the little talk before the offering, which normally isn't supposed to be a talk. It's just supposed to be a prayer. Okay. You know, maybe a, a recitation. But he went off in this long thing where he said that people who are too concerned about finding false teachings are going to hell. Oh, yeah. We did yeah. that in one of our, the last yeah. one. Yeah. And a couple other people have picked up on that. Yeah. By the way, I've noticed this. I'm seeing other channels, and, yeah. and all of a sudden they're doing a topic, and I'm just like, well, that's from my article from three years ago. <laughs> oh, well, kind of nice, but... Spread uh, the word. Yeah. And so when it hits you in the stomach, you can keep going. What do you notice right away, honey? His hair? <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed the sad music. Oh, yeah. That's right. You got to have that music. It's just... It's so beautiful and sad. This yeah. is. I was on the worship team. A lot of you watched our videos. If you haven't, you you don't know all this background. That's why I'm mentioning this. This is what you do, man. You gotta you gotta bring the Holy Spirit into the room by using emotionally manipulative music. So, that's uh, the first thing I want you to notice here. He's got a booger. Isaiah 66 says, Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. But where is the house that you'll bear for me? So Lord, today we say, look on us. Look on us and say, this is that. I want you to notice a couple things. Oh, we didn't get a little. Did you bring a pen? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I want you to notice there's a handful of times he says we are only about one thing. That's the only thing we're about. And it's more than one thing because he mentions a couple of different things. I just kind of caught that the last time we listened through. So I don't, I don't know exactly what they were, but we'll see if we can write those down. But I also want you to notice how often he quotes from the Old Testament. And he quotes from the Old Testament to uh, try to get an idea as to what's going on in his particular church in this particular time. And I also want you to, and this is going to, again, seem harsh, but um, I don't know how else to put this, but cults do a couple of things uh, over and over again. This is what cults tend to do. They are led by very charismatic, well-liked, powerful speaking type leaders. And they get people to obey them largely because they are convinced themselves and they're convincing everybody else that they are getting specific new messages from God. So to not listen to that leader would be not listening to God. Yeah, that reminds me of the very first, first church we went to when we came into Wisconsin, Mount Horeb. We don't want to go there right no, now. No, but I'm just saying that's the yeah. first time I had heard that. Pastor says if we prayed about it and we come and ask you to be the Sunday school superintendent. You better do it. And if you don't, you're disobeying God. Mm-hmm. That was yeah, the first right. time it really hit home to me. That wasn't even a charismatic church. No, no, it was a Bible-believing yeah. church. Okay, so note the Old Testament yes. usage, and what you're really going to see is he's using the... Oh, here's another thing I forgot to mention. You're going to watch us stop over and over and over again, and we are going to nitpick. Not because we're nitpicking, but no. because words mean something. Yeah. And he says some things that are incredibly confusing and even incredibly contradictory. Right. Like he'll say one thing, and if you can even make sense of it, it will be contradicted by another thing he says just a moment later. And, and the reason I want to point this out is not to pick on him as a man or as a mm. person, but because this is just so common. And this is what I think we do maybe best on this channel, is to help people do the same thing themselves. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to be dependent on us or on what we're saying, not at all. You need to critically think yes. what they're saying and actually stop it, pause it, yep. and let your mind think, okay, what does that word mean? No, it usually means this. How come they used it in this context? Mm -hmm. And or, or even just to say... He just said that sentence with, yeah. with real confidence, but is it true? Right. And is it in the Bible? And what we're going to see him do here today is he's going to say a whole bunch of things with confidence, and I think he believes it. Yeah. But it's not in the Bible. It doesn't but, matter how much you believe something either. Yeah. I believe the moon is made out of cheese. Right. I really do, man. I believe that Lucy is going to get, uh, what is it, when they... She's gonna uh, be in a football team. She's the, she's, she's gonna she's gonna the she, she's gonna be the Packers mascot. I firmly believe it. Yeah, it doesn't matter how firmly you believe it, yeah. even if you're sincere. So let's keep going. Okay. 
Did I say, didn't, I didn't even finish what I was starting to say. I'm sorry, I, I know I'm interrupting a lot. Just watch the whole video. I'm going to put the original link to this on the Risen Nation YouTube channel. If you don't like us interrupting, and I know some people don't, because you just want to hear what the guy's going to say before you listen to what we say, please listen to the video first and then come back. Okay. I have no problem with that. I don't want to irritate people. Although... We irritate people. Yeah, yeah, we both do. But I don't know. Which one do you think of us as worse? You. <laughs> That's irritating. <laughs> yeah. This is that where you pour yourself out, God. Hmm. <laughs> On the meek and the lowly. Make this, God, a house of Bethany. A place where you rest. We're so thankful for what you've done. If we can dream it up, it's not big enough. But Lord, this is your dream. This is your desire. This is your house to build. I was going to hit the bar. I could tell. Because you got the dog. I could still hit the bar. You're taking away my fun. I want to hit the bar. So we say, have your way in on... Did you notice he's supposed to be praying? But he's giving a little mini sermon. I just... You know, the other thing that's, that's, that's that overall... He has a theological framework, yeah. whether he even real, realizes it, but God is looking for a place where he can come down and rest. Right. And we've got to prepare everything just right mm -hmm. so that God feels welcome. And then welcome. we beg him to come and stay with us. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's individually and corporately today. God, I pray that even as we release vision this morning, that miracle signs and wonders happen. That God, you heal bodies, you set people free. God, awaken this city, awaken this nation. Through one act of humility at a time, it says this is not about us, this is about him. So we say thank you today. Come on, just put thankfulness on your lips. He enters his, we enter his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. We say thank you. We say thanks, God. a place God that longs only for you can you guys just like can we say thank you to can God you guys do something <laughs> I'm up here I working it I'm up here working it come on he's worth it he's worth it so thankful God is that what he said he's worth it mm -hmm. In other words, it, it, he's worth us clapping more and more and shouting and stuff. <laughs> What's hey, wrong with that phrase? You can you can clap and cheer the for your favorite of the universe. You can clap and cheer for your favorite football team. Why not God? That's the logic, I think. He deserves it. Yeah. I mean, it, why does he need to approve it? I, I don't know. I'm just bothers me. Rest here. Come on. Rest here. Come here. In Jesus' name, and everybody said. Amen, amen. Okay, you can be seated. Wow. Thanks, Ashley. I'll see you in a minute. Hey, can you guys help me honor Todd and Jackie? That was amazing. Yeah. I want to make it go faster. You can speed it up, can't you? Although Such it an start intense speed. offering speech. I love it. That's what we did last time. Okay. It's so awesome. <laughs> wow. I also, I, I wanted, um, I have some people that I want to honor. Yeah, uh, let me skip this part. Can my, my mom and dad please stand up? Matter. And we're going to talk family today. But also, too, I have to, I have to give honor honor more honors people. to Gary go. and Gail. Okay. Cool. Is that cool? All right. Um, but before I share, we've got, a, we've got a good amount of things to go through together with you. But before we do, uh, is it okay if I just take like 20 minutes? We'll all pray and fast that that 20 minutes, it'll happen within 20 minutes. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But um, I don't know what that means. But I, I, I hate it when they do this. You know, pray that I can blah, blah, blah. Pray, pray and, and fast. fast. How, how, what does that, that mean? He would have to go back in time. And not eat. Right. Be but he's saying it right now. Can we pray and fast that within this 20 minutes yes. something can happen? Yeah. That makes no sense. Well, of course it makes no sense. I mean, that really doesn't. I know. Okay. <laughs> I want to talk today 
about what true vision actually is. Here we go. Because it's not us releasing programs. Mm. It's not about releasing programs. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind. It's not us just sharing details. It's not even us telling you what tomorrow is all about. It's about us getting right vision. So it's not us telling you about details. It's not about what tomorrow, you know, what where we're going or... So basically, all the things that you normally w would think of, like plans and stuff, he's yeah. saying it's none of that. Right. But then he will later admit that they, I believe in plans, and then he's going to give the plans. And then he says, but it's not what vision is. Right. Okay. About right sight. And removing any additions that we've added to him. And so I feel like God is saying, set the table. Let's set the table. Let's do it right. And I'm not, you know, we, we don't... That's the name of this sermon, Set the Table. Oh, okay. So if you set the table correctly, with just the right amount of silverware... Not too many napkins. <laughs> then God will show up. We do series often. Um, we we want to be people that follow the cloud. Amen? See, they got the clouds in the back. Yeah, I know. So, again... You want to go back to the Israelite people wandering around the desert right. who followed the cloud when... You have Jesus Christ. We have the New Testament, right. but they make no distinction between those. There's no sense of we've made progress through Christ. Mm -hmm. They actually refer more to the Old Testament than they do to the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And they want church to be like the... Uh, they find their identity in the Old Testament yeah. almost. But I, I will, I know that this is Vision Sunday, but this is really the beginning of what I believe is going to be a foundational series for us that we will probably do just in the very beginning between both campuses of these are foundational things that we are going to pursue as a family so that we can all be in right position. And so I want to talk to you this morning about setting the table. With forks and spoons, napkins and knives. Okay, so they got to get into right position. Mm -hmm. Remember, we used to hear that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It means nothing, but it can mean anything. Mm -hmm. It's up to your interpretation yes. of what that really, what you need to do, what that means to you. And I know I'm kind of going ahead of myself here, but I think the underlying idea is that God wants to come to this church and he wants to do all these amazing things <clears throat> like no other church in the world. And they do say that. I'm not exaggerating. But he can't until we get right. Mm -hmm. When in fact, the church is the church. It's not changing. It doesn't need to change because Jesus did it all. Mm -hmm. And they never refer to that. Never. Wow. There's always this sense of if we can all just get right. Mm -hmm. and Then it, God will work. Then God will do all these things. Wow. That he you have a lot of do. work to do, yes. people. So Proverbs 29, 18, and you don't have to turn there. I'm just going oh, to yeah. go through yeah. this quickly. It don't says, where there is no vision, there we go. the people perish. I said it a couple weeks. Now, this is what everybody does who yes. twists this verse, and he is twisting this verse. Where there is no prophetic vision, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. There, that's here, it. Here, this is such a simple verse. All it means is when people don't follow God's word... Yeah. They run wild. They cast off restraint. They mm -hmm. don't know what they're doing. They get into trouble. There's a million ways you could say it, but it's God's word, his Bible. Now, when this was written, they wouldn't have used the word Bible, but it's the revelation of God. Mm -hmm. It's not the revelation that we get in our heads. Mm -hmm. It's the revelation that God has, it, it means revealed. God has revealed his word to us, and that's what we have today as the finished Bible. Mm -hmm. There's nothing to add to it. And so you're blessed when you keep that law, mm -hmm. that Bible law, right. not the revelation that's like, oh, I think I'm getting something. That's the way they're going to use yeah, it. Yeah, that's their vision. And it's just wrong. And he's not a student of the Bible. Right. He's just copying stuff he learned. He has a diploma mill theology degree. Which we looked up on LinkedIn. Yes, that's in the previous video. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't have a real degree. He doesn't know what he's doing. I use the term hack. Yeah, he does. And I... You know, again, he seems like a really nice guy. If, if he was my neighbor, I'm sure we'd get along great. But theologically, he's a hack. And what a hack means, if you don't know that term, it's just somebody who's in a position to do a job when he's not qualified. There you go. He's just doing it wrong. And, and yet it seems like he knows what he's doing. He's got the confidence. He and does everything. have the hubris. The hubris. <laughs> Back when I was teaching here, and I've, and I've learned this through men like my father that have, have been in this for 30 plus years. Vision is the foundation of courage. It's the root 
of persistence. It'll. God bless you. Sorry. I couldn't hold it back. We've never had a hit the bar for a sneeze. I think I'm allergic to this. Hey, this is a <laughs> I'm going to start out in hives now. I can't is... listen to, to this kind of. Uh, We've reached a new wrong... pinnacle in our show. We hit the bar for anything. <laughs> this, you this... interrupt too much. Oh, yeah, wait till we sneeze. <laughs> Now I'm allergic to this kind of heresy. By the way, he's in the middle of a quote that I don't know where he Sorry. got, but it's a quote about vision, and it's not from the Bible. It's a nice quote. He it might talked be from... about how he learned it from his father, I think that's what he said. But it's a quote that I'm guessing his father quoted from yeah, like Winston right. Churchill or that. some famous person. It's like one of those nice quotes about, you know, leadership. It will give you the strength to fight when it seems pointless. Vision will be your guide when nights are dark, and it'll be your health when your body grows weary. I th I'll bet you anything this is Winston Churchill. It just sounds like something he would say. In the midst of the war, you know, you got to have the vision of winning yeah. so that you can get through the difficulties. And that's true. Yeah, it's absolutely true. You know, and, and yeah. But we have the finished <laughs> word of God. We We're have the word of God. We're talking about something completely different, yeah. right. The New King James Version of 29, 18 of Proverbs says, Where there is no revelation, everyone say revelation, the people perish. He's not even honest enough to say that he's giving half the verse. Right. Sometimes when you see a quote, it'll say uh, Proverbs 29, 18a mm -hmm, right because they that means that there's an a and a b and they're only giving you a or they have a dot 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 to mm -hmm. let you know that we're there's not giving you the whole verse mm -hmm. anyway so the word vision in hebrew it's not just like something we we foresee but it's actually revelation and insight if you look it up in the in the strongs it means it's redemptive revelation that only comes by way of beholding okay so we talked about this earlier <laughs> It's good to look up the words yes. in, a, in a dictionary. You know, this would be Hebrew. Mm -hmm. The uh, New Testament would be in uh, Greek. Mm -hmm. But the general meaning of a word is really determined by the words around it. That is correct. So he's taking That's correct, the, Alex. That's correct, Alex. <laughs> he's taking the general meaning of the word. Yeah. And instead of looking at the actual verse itself, the entire verse. And putting it in context so right. you totally understand what it means. Yeah, because it just means obey the word of God yes. and you'll be blessed. Right. And without obeying the word of God, you're going to be messed up. Right. Speaking of the messed up church. Yeah, that's so. it. So it's not us necessarily knowing what the plan is as much as it is having a revelation that we know how to position ourselves for. That is so messed up. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what... I, I like... Let's... I, <laughs> so we believe, yes, there's going to be direction. There's going to be prophetic insight of what's to come. But it's more than that. Everyone say more than that. There's going to be prophetic wow. insight, but it's going to be more than that. Well, okay, you already got the word of God. And on top of that, you're going to get prophetic insight, but it's going to be more than that. So it's not details. It's not upcoming programs. Okay. True vision. And I want you to write this one down. Write True this down. vision is... Write that down. It's a revelation on how to rightly... C. Whoa, that's heavy. <laughs> okay, so revelation is the revealing of something. That's correct. That is correct, Alex. So in the process of having something revealed to you, mm -hmm. you are seeing it. Right. But he's saying, no, revelation is knowing how to see correctly. Well, that's nice that you made something up like that, Will. <laughs> but that's not what the verse you just referred to says at all. Right. And then you're not giving us a verse for this little saying either. Right. True vision is a revelation on how to rightly see. I love Job 31 when he says, I've made a covenant with my eyes. Here we go. Here we go. You got that one I, ready to go? No. Well, actually, let me see. Job 31, 1. I remember looking that up last night. But I think I closed it. I can read it, though. Ooh. Stay. Job 31, verse 1. I have made a covenant with my eyes. How then could I gaze at a virgin? I wonder how he's going to use this verse. Yeah. Um, it seems kind of awkward to have it. Awkward. Awkward. I, you know, and, and, and that's, I forgot that's the just other. the first verse. So I'm not going to the second one because he he's... He only took half a verse again. 
and claimed it oh, was Oh, yeah, religious. I made a covenant with my eyes. That's right. He just said that part. Mm -hmm. The second part was, how then could I gaze at a virgin? I forgot he doesn't finish that verse. Another uh, translation, NIV, I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a girl. <laughs> so I guess they're not going to lustfully look at girls in his church. So we're going to do, we're going to make a covenant today with our eyes because God wants to purify the way we see today so that we know not only where to run tomorrow, but how, how to run. To run. <laughs> Again, I want to dissect that. What is he talking about? I mean, really, <laughs> Take the words and, and just... I'm going to have to replay that. That's something. So he took this verse, which is about... Half not, a verse. Half a verse, which is about not lustfully looking at a girl, which is a good verse. Yeah. That's a good verse, especially for men. Yeah. <laughs> to, be, to be aware of. But he's saying, now we're going to make a covenant with our eyes. And, and we're using this verse as our context. Yes. Of how we, could, how we should do that. I've made a covenant with my eyes. So we're going to do. We're going to make a covenant today with our eyes because God wants to purify the way we see today so that we know not only where to run tomorrow, but how to run tomorrow. <laughs> you, you have, with or without shoes. You, you have the word of God. <laughs> with but, or without but, shoes. Yeah. We, this is so mystical. I think that's the category mm -hmm. that I would place most of this. He will refer to the Word of God. He twists it when he does. Mm -hmm. Even later on, he's going to talk about how important it is to use the Bible. And he does a good job of saying that, but in demonstrating the word of, the, usage, the usage of the Word of God, mm -hmm. he's failing completely. Mm -hmm. This is a really good point. I wasn't planning on making this, but we saw this when we left some previous churches. Mm -hmm. They would say, oh, the Word of God is so important. And we just want to honor the Word of God. And then they would twist the Word of God. So when somebody says, we think the Word of God is important, that doesn't mean you have to just assume they are, you know... Truthful and truthful honest and with um, rightly dividing the Word of God. They might be thinking that they're doing a good job. Right. He probably thinks he's doing a good job, but he didn't do his homework. This yeah. is not that hard. He didn't read either of the two verses that we've he shown so far. He did the so kind far. of homework he wanted to because his message is about setting the table. Yes. With bowls and glasses... Plates, mats, and plates. <laughs> so he starts with what he wants to say, uh -huh. and he... Fits everything else. Yes. Every place setting, set up the same. Around it. So we not only know, okay, this is where we're going, but uh -huh. we know how to walk on our way there. Because to... Are we running? Are we walking? <laughs> with or without I, shoes? But he's going to say they don't know where they're going. They just want to be with God. They're yeah. just going to be in his presence. They're just going to rest with God. And he's just going to be in the moment. And it doesn't matter where they're going. But he just said there, they know where they're going. Or they're, they're going to know where they're going. But more importantly, they're going to know how to get there. How to run while they or walk. walk. Yeah. Too long in church, we've made it about getting Wait. to a destination. You know, revival in the past has been an announcement that the end is near. Revival in the past has been an announcement that the end is near. It's the end of the world. I don't know of any revival like that. Well, do you? I mean, there's some. Well, there's some that have said, you know, the end is near, so repent and you know, get saved before the end of the world comes. That has worked in times past, but that's not the only way revivals have worked. Yeah. And the more important issue is why is he focusing on revival like all of these guys do when the Bible actually doesn't talk about revival. It talks about a great falling away it at the end of times. It talks about a great falling right? away. And nobody talks about that. Not these guys. That's not popular. It's in the Bible. Yeah. And, and that's how you do feed the flock. And that's how you prepare them for this world is by teaching them the truth of what's going to happen. And we are living in the end times. And they don't do that. They don't right. teach the truth. They, and by the way, the end times is the whole church period. It's right. Not, it's not like from 1970 to right, right now or right. 1983. Ever since Jesus left. Yeah. But the end times is a time of uh, needing to be very aware of people in the church who are uh, misrepresenting God yeah. severely. At and times. not telling you the truth. They're not telling you the whole truth. Yeah. But I would tell you that revival is an announcement that the kingdom is here. Oh, boy. Revival is an announcement that the kingdom is here. That, you got a verse for that, Willie? Because... That's just a nice little phrase, like half of what you say. Right. You misquote the verses, and then you have these little phrases, just like Todd White, just yes. like Bill Johnson. He uses his hands like that. Does he? Yeah. As time goes by, he'll probably get more like him. Oh, sure. Dan Muller. I'll mm -hmm. say that again. 
Because the Lord is going to change our paradigm of how we even pursue him in this hour. Okay. <laughs> Think about that change one. Change our paradigm and how we pursue Sue him, him in, in this hour. hour. In this hour is one of those ambiguous phrases that never has to be tested because... Why didn't Jesus tell us that there was going to be a paradigm that would shift well, he in is. how he's, we do... He's talking now through That's right, Willie through Will. Hinn and through mm-hmm. Todd White because they are greater apostles. They're than adding to scripture, which Galatians... Galatians... Does not say to do. Not, yeah, does not approve of. Right. Um, what did he just say? We got off track in two seconds. It's not hard to do. I know. He just said... Um, it's going to change how we worship. Oh yeah, the paradigm. If yeah. you don't know what the word paradigm is, it's like a whole model, a whole <laughs> system of things. Mm-hmm. And a paradigm would be like a whole order of things. Kind of like we used to go to the grocery store and shop. Now we're we shopping online. online. It's Everything a new shopping Amazon. paradigm. Yeah, it's a new shopping That's a good paradigm. example, honey. Thank you. <laughs> so what he just said was they're entering a new paradigm of mm-hmm. how they how they worship. Wo- how they worship. Yeah, go ahead. This goes along with what Todd White said in our previous video about how they are setting the stage for the whole new way of doing church for the entire yeah. world. And it's amazing because they just merged. Yeah. So let's make sure you did say that. The end is coming. Everyone get to the highest. Here we go. A little bit. I, I'll say that again. Because the Lord is going to change our paradigm of how we even pursue him in this hour. No. No, that's so wrong. This idea that you have to pursue him. This is really irritating to me because this is what does not give you peace in life. This is what places a burden on people. There's this idea that, well, maybe you raised your hand and made a decision for Jesus. That's nice, but you haven't pursued him. You haven't chased him. We're going to go after God. None of these terms are in the Bible. And God is not asking to be chased. And for the people who are pursuing and chasing like that, and they're getting nothing, how do they feel? I don't want to use the word that's in my head right now, but they feel like, they feel yucky. Yeah, and they don't feel like, God, there's something wrong with them. Yes, and these people on stage are the super people who... Mm-hmm. Who feel everything. They're so close to God, especially Todd White, because he, he he always reveals the secret place when he goes on stage and talks about the secret place <laughs> that no one's supposed to know because it's a secret place, but right. he talks about it all the time. That is a, a form of pietism, and uh, that's a topic I've mentioned just a little bit. But it's this idea that the whole purpose of the Christian life is to get better and better and to be more holy and to get as close to Jesus as you possibly can and to just ignore doctrine. You use the Bible basically as a way to kind of do whatever it needs to do to make you like Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if you have to twist a little bit or misuse it a little bit, that's okay because you're getting so close and you're chasing after God. And uh, in, in the in the world of the original pietistic movement, which which was originally a Lutheran movement in the 1600s, they were rejecting the formal church because they thought it was too formal. They thought it was too rigid. It was too structured. All they did was talk about theology. All they talked about was the Bible. We need to get something in our heart. We need to get right in our heart. And that's true. It's not wrong to say that our hearts should be uh, veered towards loving God and loving our neighbor. We, we should want that. But if that's all you have and you have no doctrine, you have no theology, you have no real serious Bible understanding, then it your heart... about your feelings. Yes, and your heart can mislead you in those situations. Yes. And I see a guy like this as being incredibly misled. Should... Very emotional. Very, yeah. t- way too much emphasis on the heart. Yep. Because revival is not an announcement of, of the end is coming, everyone get to the highest mountain. No, revival is is we've... We've ascended the mountain of the Lord and the kingdom of God is going to flood the earth as the waters cover the sea. And we will be a church. Listen, we will be a church that's going to stand on the promises that he promised us of as the waters cover the sea, so will the knowledge of my glory fill the earth. There's so much hubris in that. I could do an hour on that one extended sentence right there. I mean, I got to replay that. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry I don't have it marked easier to get to the You know what? Spot. That's okay. Of, of the end is come. So first he sets up a false version of revival. That's right. That I don't know hardly anybody, if anybody, that holds to. This is called a straw man. You want to make your point? Well, you create an opposing point that seems to be the opposite, that isn't actually a real point at all, mm-hmm. but it's so weak, it's easy to knock down. That's why they call it a straw man. So it makes your point look much more strong. It looks like, wow, he really has a valid point, when in fact... His point is not validated at all. No. It's just an assertion without any... He doesn't have any Bible references. Well, in this case, he's misusing the Bible when he does 
reference it. And it's so loaded with we are the special mm -hmm. people in the entire world, mm -hmm. in all of the history of the church. Nobody And is we're like going us. up to the mountain. Yes, we're ascending the mountain. Which is what Moses did when he got the Ten Commandments. Right. Revival is not an announcement of, of the end is coming, everyone get to the highest mountain. No, revival is, is we've, we've ascended the mountain of the Lord and the kingdom of God is going to flood the earth. So if you really want to understand the meaning of that, mm -hmm. all the typology, all of the original use of this uh, idea of ascending the mountain is mm -hmm. to get closer to God. And it's, it's uh, culminated in Christ. <laughs> mm -hmm. So now we don't have to try to do it anymore. Mm -hmm. It's already been done in Christ. That's the very, very short and sweet theological answer. There are theologians a million times smarter than me who have written books on this. Um, and it's a really important point. And it's an idea that's traced all throughout the Old Testament, but it, it's... It's finalized in what, through Christ. Through Christ on the cross. What's crazy is we that don't have to ascend the mountain anymore. And then he says, and then the kingdom will be flooded. No, Jesus said that he is. He brought the kingdom with yes. him. You know, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's and, here. And the kingdom we're not of God going is, and ascend and become special right. people so that the kingdom can get flooded down on earth. And if you notice the emphasis, it's about what he's asserting. What they are going to do. Right. If you have a pastor who's really boasting about all the stuff that you're going to do, you're going to a bad church. I'm, I don't know how else to say it. It's just, yeah. you, you always should be referring back to what Christ has done. Right. I'm going to put a, a link to an article. I meant to do it in the last couple of videos, and it's an older article from Pastor Todd Wilkin, who has a wonderful, wonderful program called Issues Etc., which is a, originally a radio program. It's also now a podcast. Just go to issues, et cetera, I believe, dot org. Mm -hmm. It's one of the links on the Messed Up Church website. By the way, there's tons and tons of resources. And tons. And tons on the Messed Up Church website. I have lots of recommended channels. A lot of you ask really, really good questions, and it's just not possible to answer all of you. I'm really sorry, but most of the questions you're asking are answered in the various articles and uh, resources that so are So do a little digging. Up. Yeah, please do. Mm -hmm. What was I just talking about before? Todd Wilkin. Yes, he has an article about what does it mean to have a Christ-centered sermon? What are the hmm. key things to look for in every sermon? It should be a Christ-centered sermon. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be boasting about us and making great claims about what we're going to do. Okay. So I'm going to put that link in the, the description. Remember, every video we put up, there's articles and links that will answer some of your questions right away. And if you don't find those answers... Like some of you have asked about, what about this pastor? What about that pastor? Why don't you do a video on this guy? We can't do everybody. We hope to do as many as we can. But it's very possible that one of the people you're trying to learn about has already been covered by one of the people in our recommended channels or in one of the resources on the Messed Up Church website. Okay. Enough. As the waters cover the sea, and we will be a church. Listen, we will be a church that's going to stand on the promises that he promised us of, as the waters cover the sea, so will the knowledge of my glory fill the earth. What does that mean? The knowledge of his glory will fill the earth. Because of their church. Right. I mean, that's what he just said. That's right. What does it mean? Well, what does it mean? I don't think he really wants us to ask that question. I don't think, right. I don't think he's really thought through what he's saying. Mm -hmm. I think he's just repeating nice ideas that he's heard other people say. He probably has a few ideas that he kind of jotted down and like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. I'm going to use that. But this is such hubris. This is such boasting. It, this is not what a man of God does. If you're going to boast, be like the Apostle Paul. What did he boast yeah. in? He would boast in what Christ has done on the cross, right. not in all the great claims of what he plans on doing in or the future. Or what he has done in the past yeah. or where yeah. he, what he accomplished. I mean, he boasted in his his beatings, right. you know, and all the things that he suffered. Right. He didn't boast in all right. the great stuff he was about to do. Mm -hmm. So it, it doesn't matter if the whole church is waiting for the rapture to come. We, we believe he's coming, but the way in which he comes is a bride that is spotless, ready, and has nothing in their sights. So get ready to be perfect. Yeah. This is the bridal paradigm teaching. Right. Which is, uh, I think the person who teaches this most prominently is Mike Bickle mm -hmm. at International House of Prayer. I won't go and, there. Yeah, that's a, that's a really big topic. Um, I did some study on that and actually gave a, a talk to women's uh, group. Yeah, we want to. And the only thing that they said to me, wow, different you, people, is like, wow, you really know the Bible. Because all the other people who talked about the bride of Christ was all, all hype and, and emotion yeah. and and having a the warring bride with their you know sword. And, and honestly, it wasn't like you went to seminary and studied mm -hmm. for years and years. You just took the time to 
study the Bible on that topic, right. which anybody can do. Anyway, so um, I, I hope to... I, I wanted to mention there is a, an article, if I can remember to put this in the link, there is a website or a blog called Heroscope, which is a funny right. mixture of heresy and her, um, horoscope. horoscope yeah. huh? But they have a whole series of articles about this whole uh, bridal paradigm and this presence. Mm -hmm. And I think the gist of it... I, I'm burping, sorry. That's professional filmmaking right there, people. He needs chocolate. Not yet. We're not, we're not there yet. <laughs> um, it's a series of articles trying to explain this completely new type of teaching. And they use a lot from the Song of Solomon mm -hmm. and this, this imagery of the bride and the groom. Mm -hmm. And the gist of it, and I, what he just summarized there, is this idea that Jesus is coming back. Yeah, Jesus is going to come back in us. We are going to be Christ when we get perfect enough. Hmm. It's really weird. And I summarized it very, very briefly without doing it justice. And, mm -hmm. and Mike Bickle would go on for nine hours trying to explain, no, what I mean to say is these things. And he confused you confusing. all the more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But him. He told King Hezekiah, I want you to go into the most holy place and I want you to clear the debris out of it. Old Testament. He told Jeremiah, before you build and plant, I want you to root out and tear down. Old, Old Testament. Testament. So I would tell you, how many of you believe God's doing a new thing? Thought stopping device. Instead of saying, I'm not sure if this is right or not, I think it's possible that God wants to do a new thing in our church, but I'm open to hearing other people's input. <clears throat> no, he's doing the opposite. He's saying, Everybody knows this is true, right? Raise your hand, agree with me. This is like when you're in sales. That's a great price, isn't it? <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, 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 <laughs> This, if I say no, then yeah, I'm going to look silly. Yeah, so th that's just a little aside. That one was thrown in for free. No extra charge for that. So if God's doing a new thing, nothing about what's old can come with us. <laughs> Except all the Old Testaments, that yeah. verses that he's quoting. All he's doing is quoting the Old and Testament. And the cloud, but and nothing, going up to the mountain. Nothing old can come with us. No, but even though that's all we're focusing on is the Old Testament. How much you want to bet everything old is coming with them? Do you think Todd White's going to continue to show up and give celebrity appearances to sure. pump up the, the audience? Of course he is. The jam. Pump, pump up, up the jam. jam. Pump up the jam. Pump it up. <laughs> pump it up. Pump it up a little more. Get the body going. So what he's trying to say is we merge these two ministries yeah. and we got to start over again, man. Yeah. It's all new. It's all fresh. Nothing's, nothing's going to come with us. Nothing old. Nothing old. Okay. Nothing. Listen. Nothing. Is that my, uh, is that my, was that you? Oh, it's your, it's your ringer. I thought it was my dad's phone ring. Are you serious? <laughs> Nothing about what was old can come with us. That goes for Risen Nation Church. That goes for lifestyle Christianity. If it's a new thing, nothing about the new thing can be old. Nothing. And Okay, what about the Bible? That's old. What about Jesus what dying about, for your sins? Yeah. <laughs> That's old. Are you going to throw that out? <laughs> Because it's not new enough. He's saying things that sound really impressive to yeah. this very gullible audience. But if you dissect it and look at the words... It's, it, it's idiotic. It's hubris. <laughs> and in seasons and in transitions like this, the temptation is to give our opinion to God about what we think God should do. Just like what I'm doing on stage. Yes. His whole thing is what he thinks God should do. Yeah. But he's saying it's coming from God. Let's listen, let's, blah, let's listen to that again. Okay. Oh, do we have to church do that goes for lifestyle Christianity. If it's a new thing, nothing about the new thing can be old. Nothing. And in seasons and in transitions like this, the temptation is to give our opinion to God about what we think God should do. Okay, we are tempted to give our opinion to God as to what we think God should do. So the opposite of that is to say, I have no idea what's coming. And that shows how spiritual I am. Mm -hmm. If God wants to burn this place down. And it's new because it's not yeah. old. If he wants us to roll around on the floor and scream because and Because it's new. And, it's new. It's a new thing. We didn't mm -hmm. do that before. Bloodletting. It's yeah. new. <laughs> and I'm here for my annual haircut and bloodletting. <laughs> You'll feel a lot better after a good bleeding. Sorry. I mean, seriously. If God hey, wants to. Hey, it's new. We didn't do that before. It must be good. <laughs> yeah. And how God should do it. And I would tell you, those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God, not those that try to lead Him. It <laughs> those who are led by the Spirit are sons, are sons of, of God, God, not, not those, those who, who try, to, try lead to lead him. him. 
is there any other options? Right. I mean, what, he's making it sound like, be like me and Todd. Yeah. And you'll be led by the Spirit like we right. are. But if you have any other opinions about things other than the one that we present... You're leading God. Yes, you're trying to tell God what to do. So yeah. in other words, God is telling these men... And if you say, I don't agree... Or what about in the past, didn't we used to do it this way? And if they say... No, God's leading us in a new way. Aren't, aren't you with us? Yeah, aren't you with God? Yeah, aren't you a son of God? Now, there is a way that I think what he could be saying is correct. You know, there's a <clears throat> the very common situation where people have been in a church for a long time... And they say, we've always had the potluck after Sunday school. Yeah. We've always had an organ and a piano. Yeah, you know, those kind of things, people do get stuck in their ways. And that's, I agree, that's something that... We've people, always had pews, not chairs. Yeah, we've stuff always, like that. whatever. The pastor used to wear a white robe, now it's black. I don't think that's right, you know. Yeah. But the way he's using it is pretty confusing, and it's very overly broad. spiritualized. It's very broad. Very broad, very mystical. But the enlightened ones are hearing from God, and you better... Listen to the enlightened ones, I right. think is kind of the underlying thing he's getting at. It just doesn't... Now, I, it, it also is possible that he thinks that some um, just regular member of the church could get this new thing from God, and that they would all have to agree with it because it popped into somebody's head. If that's what you think mm -hmm. the prophetic is, that it mm -hmm. always could happen to anybody, mm -hmm. I don't know. Work. It, it'll never work out. So we're not going to be a house where we're going to... Tell God what it is that we're going to do. We're going to be a house that's going to follow a cloud. Okay, but he's not going to do either of those things. Yeah, literally, the cloud is not there. I the know. cloud was for the children of Israel yeah. in the Old Testament. Hey, Willie, we have this new thing called the... The Bible? The Bible with the New Testament and Jesus dying on the cross and the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. I guess you us. don't need it. Yeah, I guess we need the you cloud need back. Yeah, the see, cloud, they got the clouds in this back. That's a fake cloud. They got the clouds in the background. Yeah, um... That helps you. What did he say before the What did he say before the cloud thing? The like, clown thing? <laughs> no. Hang on. Okay. God, what it is that we're going to do? We're going to be a house that's going to follow a cloud. So we're not going to tell God what He's supposed to do. We're going to follow the cloud. What about the clear instruction that we already have in God's Word? That's he's, right. He's not referencing that at all. None. I mean, you know why I think is partially anyway because that's what all the old churches do. Yeah. Anybody can do We're that. We're going to follow the Spirit of God. Yeah. And, the, and, that's and that can happen at any time and anywhere and, and any could, place. Who, and it has to be new. It has to be new. And we're not going to make plans, but we're going to make plans. Right. It's okay to make plans, but we should just rest and know that God's going to... But you got to do more. <laughs> Amen. I want you to turn quickly to Habakkuk chapter oh, 2. Here this we is, go. This is really bad. Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 2. And I'm going to start in verse 1. No, let him go. Okay. Let him go. So I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart. And I'm going to watch to see. I don't know why it's been getting me lately. I'm going to watch to see what he'll say to me. And what I will answer when I'm corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision down and make it plain on tablets. That he may run who reads it. Verse 3, for the vision is yet for the appointed time, but at the end it will speak. It will not lie, though it tarries. Wait for it. I, I've learned that word is. wait means carve. Though the vision tarries, let it carve you and break you into something. I'm sorry, these tiny skinny I got pages. it. Yeah, I got it too. I just wanted to see two different kinds of visions. It's chapter... Two. Chapter two. One. We actually spent some time trying to get the gist of this book before because honestly if you want to say anything about anything just grab some passage out of the old testament and pretend that it applies to you right if that's what you've been taught or that's what you've kind of watched people do as a christian i just want to encourage you that that's just the wrong way to do it and if it's confused you well it kind of makes sense there's a reason why it confused you yeah. it's not how you're supposed to interpret scripture what i um learned about habakkuk is that it's a, a it's unusual in that it was a dialogue between Habakkuk and God. Mm -hmm. And that's what this short little book is. Habakkuk talks to God, God talks back. And Habakkuk is, is complaining to God because the, uh, the chosen people, yeah. they were disobedient and they weren't listening. Kill and God, God answers back by saying, I'm going to raise up the enemies mm -hmm. of my people who will punish my people. 
And Habakkuk's not happy about that either, because he's like, well, wow, you're going to punish us by, with, by using the people that are even worse than us? Yeah. And God says, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. So what Will is going to do is he's going to take these passages, and he's just going to yank them completely out of the Bible, and he's saying that those apply to this new risen nation, nation church in a way that they've never applied to any other people or church in all of history. So in the... Um, so, so it's interesting, Go ahead. Uh, reading chapter 2, verse 1. I'll take my stand in my watch post and station myself on the tower and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. Did he say that? He didn't say that. Yeah, I think he... He's, he didn't say he was complaining. This is one of the most, another one of the most misused Bible verses <laughs> in the entire Bible. And it basically is used to say, if you write stuff down, it'll come true. Oh, right. Let's just, we didn't get there yet. Here we go. Habakkuk chapter 2, and I'm going to start in verse 1. So I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart. And I'm going to watch to see. I don't know why it's been getting me lately. Why did you stop where there's a comma? I'm going to watch to see what he'll say to me. No, not no, what he he'll say to me. No, he doesn't say that. What I answer, what and, and what answer me. I am to give to this complaint. Yeah. And what he will say to me, and what I will answer concerning my complaint. And the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets, so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end, and it will not prove false. So that is his answer to Habakkuk when mm -hmm. Habakkuk was saying, And I will answer, you know, I will wait. I will look to see what he will say to me, <clears throat> and what answer, I am, uh, what answer I am to give to this complaint. Yes. This is a specific passage about a specific time in, in the history in the Old Testament of the Jewish people. And it's a conversation between the prophet Habakkuk and God himself. Yeah. And you cannot lift it out and say that it's applying to what's going on it's right now. It's descriptive. It's not prescriptive. Right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Let's You're keep welcome. going. I don't want to linger on this because this is going to go on forever. Yes, it will. And what I will answer when I'm corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision down and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Verse 3, For the vision is yet for the appointed time, but at the end it will speak. It will not lie, though it tarries. Wait for it. I, I've learned that word wait means carve. Though the vision tarries, let it carve you and break you into something. Again, the story behind this. He's just taking one word and he's taking the he's meaning of the word. He's not explaining the story no, at all. No. He's taking the words and making it fit what he wants to point out. So right. if you really want to know what Habakkuk says, yeah. read it. <laughs> yeah, and a good study Bible. Yes. You know, I've got a whole stack of them here. There's, there are a lot of good ones. Yeah, they're, they're, they all will tell you the, the basic understanding of, you know, who's writing to who and yeah, what's the, the time frame, what's the history behind mm -hmm. it. Not this man. Because it'll surely come. It will not tarry. And I love at the end of verse 4 it says, but the just shall live by faith. So, Which is, four. now he's applying to him and his church. They will be the ones who live by faith. They will be just. He said that was verse 4. Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by faith. Oh, he left out the first part of verse 4. The part about being puffed up. Yeah. So let me let me. I think read. that's the Todd White verse. <laughs> Let me read it again. Literally and figuratively. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets, so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him, but the righteous shall live by faith. Moreover, a wine is a traitor, an arrogant man who is never at rest. His greed is as wide as shale, shale, and the grave. The grave, like death, he has never enough. He gathers for himself all nations and collects as his own all peoples. Takes, and, and tape, takes captives all the peoples. Another way to put it. Okay, but but basically he read it, but he didn't. He read um, it'll come and it won't delay. He he leapt over, leaped over the first part of verse four. And went to, but the righteous shall live by faith. What came before that was, behold, his soul is puffed up. It is not upright within him. So I think that's kind of important to point out. Kind of important. Yeah. He's trying to tell us something. Trying to tell us Every something. Yeah, if you wanted to actually tell us what it says, you would just read it. Right. 
and you would read it in context. Instead of thinking you're getting but new... this is mystical. Right. A new vision, a new yeah, he, word from the Lord. Well, if he did it the old-fashioned way, that'd be old. Yeah. So I see. There you go. He's living up to his uh, idea. Vision requires waiting, and that waiting will always break you. If I've watched a man go through breaking and learn what it looks like to come out... So now he's going to equate Todd White to Jesus. I didn't hear Burning this Burning even more on the other side. I mean, consider Christ Jesus who went into the same wilderness that the children of Israel did and what took them 40 years and they couldn't even see the promise took Christ 40 days and he came. So he's equating the children of Israel to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And shame on the children of Israel took him 40 years to figure it out. But the son of God, it took 40 days. Yeah, because he was committed, man. It was different. Yeah. Came out more empowered. And, and listen to this. He was led there by the Spirit of God. Come on. I know that that messes with your theology, but you can't take stuff out of the Bible. Like I do. Yes. <laughs> he does. You can't take stuff out of the it's Bible. projection. What I think he's referring to is that Jesus was led into a very difficult situation by the Spirit. Yeah. And, of course, he knows that in his group, they all talk about prosperity. <clears throat> Benny Hinn is his uncle. <clears throat> Favor is way better than money because favor will keep money coming. Prosperity. <clears throat> so he comes across a passage and he's at least got the guts to say, well, it seems like there are times when the Holy Spirit might lead us towards something that's not prosperity. You're thinking a whole lot of nice things here. I'm trying to be fair. I know you are. Yeah. He was led into... I'll tear him to shreds so just in a minute from now, so don't worry about it. ...to the wilderness to be tempted. Because God has a way of when God wants to produce the anointing, he needs an oil press. Oh, this is a bunch of nothing. So you need to have the anointing, says him. To, and to get that, you have to go through an oil press. Yes. So he's going to combine all these weird little illustrations and things about wine and oil and clusters of grapes and things. All because the people in his church and in the whole New Apostolic Reformation crowd think, oh, i got to get that anointing. Now, sometimes they'll say, well, all i got to do is just ask for it. God just... Boom, he just gives it. Don't do anything. It's all just resting God. And then other times they go through these elaborate steps of what you're okay. supposed to do, which is what I think he's about to do here. When God wants to release new wine in the earth, it says, listen, new wine is found in the cluster. Hello, cluster. You can't make wine with one grape. So what God does is he assembles us. He doesn't just gather us. He assembles us. Mm -hmm. Let's just let it go for a while. This is a bunch of nothing. It's a bunch of nothing. Let's hear a bunch of nothing One altogether. to another, living stone upon living stone unto a dwelling place for the Lord. And God is putting us together in this cluster, and we've got to be broken together. So we God can't come to your church until you've gone through all the steps. And I, I guess God isn't at their church yet because he's now instructing them on in all the stuff that they have to do in order to get God to... To be pleased with their activities. Okay. This is the God who needs to be appeased. Yeah. That's right. I mean, that's Old Testament big time. Yeah. But they're not even doing the stuff of the Old Testament. Right. So they kind of probably would recognize that Jesus came and we don't have to live by the Old Testament. But at the same time, they are, in many ways, trying to live like it still is the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. we've, got to, we've got to be carved together. We've got to let the vision have its root and its way in us. And no, the, the vision is the word of God. It's not what pops into your head. God's not going to tell us about tomorrow. He's going to say, trust me today. So God's not going to tell you about tomorrow. He says, trust you or trust him for today. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's kind of true about, mm -hmm. about certain things. Um, but why do they have all these prophetic things? And why do they want to get into the present so much that they know the steps they're supposed to take and how to walk the right way? I think it's very contradictory. He's going to say, I'm going to give you bread for today and then tell you don't worry about how it's going to come tomorrow. It says, I will stand my watch. You know, we have, we have elders here that you guys are all going to get to meet. We're, uh, our elders. Why did he bother even reading that verse? I will stand my watch. I don't know. He just read the first half. Maybe of he the... thought all the elders are standing their watch. Uh, yeah. I mean... By the way, the elders at this church have already failed by letting this guy be the senior pastor. Right. He's obviously not qualified in any way, shape, or form. There's pastors. We're all going to be in the lobby after service just to hug on your necks. and Don't you know, hug on my neck. Pastoring please. a church, and I don't know a lot of you. So 
Um, you know, I want to, and I know that that's not going to be possible, but. I want to know a lot of you, but that's not going to be possible. It's too you big of a church. And you can't touch them. You can't yeah. really go there. So um, this is another point, and I know there's some really big churches that are going to be offended by this, but I just don't think this is the right model for a church. At least there's nothing wrong with a small church. It's better. I mean, in many, if not most ways, if not all ways, a small church has a pastor who actually knows everybody's name, and he talks to them, and he studies the Bible with them, and he comes to your house and he prays with you and stuff mm -hmm. like that. He visits people in the hospital. He's shepherding in that respect. Yes. It's very a close shepherding situation. And if it grows, well, then they get another pastor. Right. So that, but there's never more than a, maybe 100, 150 people per pastor. Right. This idea that he's never going to meet the people in his own church? Yeah, that's... That's just not right. No. But I, I want to be a house that actually is a family, not just says we're family. Okay, but you just said you can't even meet the people. Right. What kind of family is that? Dysfunctional. Yes. <laughs> is family not not a conference every Sunday? Except that it is. Mm -hmm. Not not. Listen, not celebrity. This is all. Oh, built, celebrity! Yes. No, 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 no. Christianity. Not celebrity Christianity. But this whole thing it was is. built by Todd White. Yeah. Who is the very definition of a Christian celebrity? Yes. Who built a following by uh, going on YouTube? Right. And, and you know, being going with to Kenneth Copeland. Yeah. And, so, um, Will, I know you're probably not going to watch this, but why don't you just uh, not have Todd White ever show up anymore? Why don't you just take over completely and tell everyone Todd White is going to be behind the scenes for the rest of our history? Because you just said that it's supposed to be a new thing. The old way was to have Todd there all the time, pumping everybody up, Pump it up. and building up the crowds. Why don't you have the guts to actually do what you say? And just be the pastor and, and to just let Todd go and do his thing somewhere else. How much you want to bet that's not going to happen. Right. Todd's going to have to come back. And, you know, this reminds us of the church that we were in for a short time that had a very, very, very energetic, great speaker. Mm -hmm. And he could build up the church every Sunday. When he was there, the parking lot was full. Right. And whenever he was gone, if everybody Nobody knew. Nobody was there. Yeah. And if they had a problem with uh, money. They would just say, hey, we're kind of low right now. And he would pump the people up, and they would never have a problem with money as long as he was aware of the problem and he could make it happen. Mm -hmm. This is celebrity Christianity on a mm -hmm. small scale here. Very we, small. It, this is the biggest scale. Mm -hmm. But a family with fathers and sons that, and, and daughters that become fathers and mothers, a, a family that's not impressed by the anointing of a man, but impressed that the glory of God is in this room. Not impressed is the phrase that Bill Johnson uses all the time. I've listened to him a lot. I'm sure. Which I, I know don't you have. I don't recommend to anybody. It hurts. I need aspirin. Um, That's it. <laughs> but they're not impressed by the anointing on a man, but they're impressed by the what do you say, presence of God in the room? Okay, well, I got another challenge for you and all the other NAR pastors who are in this camp. Don't have a praise band. And see if the presence of God shows up. Yeah. Just sit there and pray. No music. No emotionally manipulative, hypnotic music. And see if the presence of God that you define shows up. See if the cloud shows up. They are totally dependent on these worship teams. Uh, see, I've been asking God prayers personally between him and I of like, Lord, I want this church, I, I want everybody that walks into this church to have an Emmanuel experience. And a, and a... He's telling God what mm -hmm. he should do, mm -hmm. which you're not supposed to do, because if you do that, then you're not a son of God. So, or a son's, you know, not the son of God, but you're not called a son. So according to his own words, he's not a son because he's telling God what he wants him to do. Emmanuel moment, which is this church be marked with that oh, name, yeah. Emmanuel. God is here. He's with us. He's always with us. Thank you. Not Todd is here. Not, not William is here, but this is the house of God. This is God's house to build. And when God builds the house... Revival breaks out. Says so what Bible verse? But we're not allowed to put our name to it. I'm fascinated by Zechariah when, when, when Elizabeth just had John the Baptist. Okay. Thank you. And John the Baptist comes out, and Zechariah had just become. He he lost his speech. He couldn't talk anymore. He was he he. The Lord was keeping him, carving him, breaking him for something, and. And in that culture, it even says it in the, in the scriptures, in the account of Luke, that at that time, you know, and even to... It'd be kind of nice if he read the Bible instead of just no. summarizing it. Uh-huh. 
Today, in the, in the Middle Eastern culture, you name your son after the father. And Elizabeth says his name's gonna be John, but they've gotta wait to see what the father says. They hand him a tablet on that day and he writes on the tablet, his name is John. His mouth opens and he begins to prophesy. And I've heard it said that he passed the test of not naming what he carried after himself. He heard it said. I heard it said. Huh. Does God want to use men to birth something? Absolutely. But I think the temptation that has actually <clears throat> caused revivals to end is that man took identity of it. That man became impressed with the favor and the anointing of God on our life. But the anointing... That's your fault. Your whole group. It's all based on these celebrities mm -hmm. who... Why do you go to their meetings? Because they have the anointing. So stop having celebrities. Stop. Stop having Heidi Baker show up or Bill Johnson or Mike Bickle or any of these people. Stop headlining. Uh, headlining? Headlining. Headlining. <laughs> Don't the, wear headlights. The conference with Todd White's name. Just say it's a conference. You woke her up. They're not going to do it. No, they this won't. This whole thing is a publicity operation. And he knows because he was in charge of running the events for Benny Hinn. That's a good point. So this is, um, maybe he sincerely thinks that this stuff is going to happen, but he was behind the scenes of all of it, and he made it all happen using these artificial means of promotion and, you know, naming conferences with catchy names yeah. and advertising and doing all the stuff that anybody does. And now he's saying we don't want to do any of those things. But he will do those things. He's even going to mention later on <clears throat> that they have a marketing team. That's right. They have a marketing team. Yeah, at this new church, like, mm -hmm. un, it's not like any church in the world. Mm -hmm. It's simply a gate. It's like there's a beautiful house here, and the anointing is a gate that releases people to come in. God will anoint. Says what verse? Anoint men and women. God will anoint a worship. Dude, how many of you enjoyed worship? Oh, my gosh. God will anoint worshipers. That he'll send ahead of time, and all they are is we are the gate. Like when he told, when when it says of Jacob, you know, Jacob had this encounter where he sees a ladder from heaven to earth, angels ascending and descending, and he says, "This is none other the house of God, the gate of heaven." Are you the house of God? Then you are the gate of heaven. You're the entrance into Him for for the world. For the no pressure or anything. <laughs> you are the gate. The Holy Spirit got his hands tied. No one can show up at a church unless you are the gate. Mm -hmm. The people, and so we become so impressed with the gate that we never allow people to enter into the house of glory. Oh. Look how beautiful the gate is. Wow. Look how anointed the gate. It's got gold on it. It's anointed. There's so many layers of nothingness here that I don't even, let's just let him go. God's saying, open and get out of the way. No, he's not. Because there's a whole house. Where's the verse? Where the glory. See, I want the glory of God to come here where we can crawl off the stage and you won't notice. No, you don't. You don't want that. That's never happened. It's never happened and it never will happen. It doesn't even make sense. No. God doesn't say he'll do that. God doesn't say he'll do that. And exactly. he's never showed that he did that. He doesn't claim that that's what you should expect. Why didn't the Apostle Paul With say to Timothy... The pastor of a church, hey, remember to crawl off the stage so that the cloud can show up. Or the glory of God. The only place that I know of that really that happened was the, um, the Holy of Holies. Yeah. And only the priest could go in the Holy of Holies. Only one person who happened to be the priest. Is that the Old Testament or the New yeah, Testament? Yeah, that's the Old Testament, yeah, no, I think. I'm pretty huh. sure that is. Come on. This, this is, I'm telling you, the, the, the generation that God's raising that I've, that I've heard declared my whole life of what's... He hasn't heard this from the Bible. No. He's referring to all the stuff he's heard for probably his entire life. This is the life. generation, which our kids were told, you're the generation. Yeah. Now this next generation. The Kath other generation Catherine behind. Catherine Kuhlman said there wasn't yeah. any new generation. In the 74, 1974, I think she was. 72. 72. Said, you are the last youth yeah, generation. I know it is. Yeah. And then, I must believe it. Because <laughs> I know the word of prophecy as I do. <laughs> That's pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was I've good. Watched, it's watched scares that. me. Yeah. Well... Halloween is coming. That's so true. We're practicing. Coming is every single person gets to be anointed. Every single person gets to be Christ in me, the hope of glory. Cro okay, okay. Christ in me, the hope uh, of, I am the hope of glory. You are to be the hope of glory. We looked up this verse yeah. earlier. Do we want to even go there? No. We're, we're so far behind. Mm -hmm. You are not the hope of glory. Christ in you is the hope of glory only in the sense that Christ is the hope of glory. Yeah. And he's in you. Right. But you are not the hope of glory. Right. 
It's good to be a representative of Christ. It's Absolutely. good to, to show the love of Christ. Absolutely. It's good to know the word of Christ. And I think most importantly, the thing that he's not saying is that we as humble, broken creatures in all of our weaknesses can simply share the gospel. And God works through the gospel message. Well, and I think the hope of glory, I mean, when you think about it, the apo- the apostles... Yeah, it's the hope of heaven. It's yes. not the hope of glory and on earth. And can you imagine the, the God of the universe showed up took care of the sins for us so we don't have to, you know, kill animals anymore. Not only just that, but we have assurance because of Jesus Christ. That's our hope, and that's to go to glory with him. I I mean, I I had to stop and think because glory to them is always about what they're doing now. And it's not actually what they're doing now, but it's what they're about to do. It's always what's about to happen. And they're always making these promises about what's right around the corner. But the hope of glory is referring to the hope of heaven. Right. That we will live with Christ in glory. Yes. Not in this life. Right. Christ in us, the hope of glory. And DFW needs a generation of people that are anointed. Not not anymore just anointed preachers. An entire generation that is the kingdom of God in the earth. So what happens to when the kingdom these people... of God is already here? Yes. It just... What? <clears throat> And all of these people who are right now thinking they are in the greatest church that's ever been. Right. They're making all these incredible claims. Mm -hmm. And they will not happen. So they're going to have to either live in this pretend world. And constantly push for it and then get lose hope because it's not happening. Be be discouraged and possibly lose their faith. Because they're like, I was told that God was going to do this. Something must be wrong with me. Or something's wrong with God. There is no God. Right. Or I'm not good enough because the guy yeah. on stage keeps talking about all these great things that happen someplace else, but they're not happening in my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what normal Christianity is all about. It's not about being the hope of glory. It's not no. about doing signs and wonders everywhere you go because nobody does. I mean, he says, oh, we want, we're going to see signs and we don't see signs and wonders in their little production. Why don't they just do them? Right. Now, Todd's been talking about it for over they like say that they 12 do it there. years, 14 years. They have cameramen. Yeah. Why don't they just... Show it. Why don't they film it and then show us all the signs and wonders that have happened they, and the been, healings that take that's place? That's an excellent point. They've been claiming that it happens every day. Not only people have phones that have... Yes, they all have a camera in their pocket. Absolutely. They give speeches about the things that will be happening yeah. while claiming that those things are happening all the time with no evidence. Right. That's an excellent way to put it. Come on! That have been broken together, mm. that have been crushed together. This house has gone through some stuff. Oh, yeah. I shared it uh, two weeks ago. I asked Todd before service. I said, bro, I feel like I should just tell everything. He said, I'm an open book. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there you go. He's an open book. Then will Todd White release his income now that they don't have the the Form 990 because they're a church? Will Mm -hmm. he release how much money he's getting paid? Will he release how much money he gets in cash at the various events where he's a guest speaker? Will they talk about the fact that we've proven on film that he does the fake leg lengthening mm-hmm. trick? Now, somebody will say, well, there's a real leg lengthening thing that happened. Fine. Great. Whatever. We have him on film doing a fake one. So if you want to talk about the real ones, that's fine. But that's not what we're talking about. There's a He's actually moving the right. leg that's supposed to be stationary. For it to be fake, he has to be doing something wrong. Yes. Or something. He has to make it happen. So Todd White is not an open book. <clears throat> he's a fraud. Right. At least to some extent. It's on film. Right. You guys are always talking about how well, we're going to do such great signs and wonders. There's going to be all this evidence and people are going to start believing. Well, we've got proof. We've got evidence that you're not doing these things. Right. So why don't you want to look at that evidence? Because we're not going to be a place where we're interested in having you impressed with us. Mm. We want a place where God's miracles have no hindrance because people are grieving the Holy Spirit. Not here. <laughs> Not here. He is our shepherd. And I might... Uh, this is bragging. This is unbelievable bragging. They're How does the... he know no one in the church will grieve the Holy Spirit? Because number he just, one. Because he just proclaimed it. And they... number two, when he talks about... Oh, what did he say? And he basically... He's like, not here, but re, 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 redo it. Do that thing. Do that thing. Like, what does a monk say? Yeah. Backwards, backwards. You know. Miracles have no hindrance because people are grieving the Holy Spirit. Not here. Not here. Is that what you want to He is our shepherd. And I'm... And who, if he's our shepherd, who are his spokespeople? He and Todd. Right. So, God's our shepherd. So, you got to listen to us. 
He didn't say that. But and yeah. and the only thing that hinders miracles is we're not holy enough. So if you're how having, about if God just doesn't want to do it? How yeah. about if God has other plans? No, well, that's no, not it. Because the theological framework underneath everything is that well, you're all going to get healed every time you right. ask, and if it doesn't happen, it's your fault. Something's wrong. I might. And Todd might be the ones that lead you, ah! but really we're just following and teaching you how to follow. Yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna... just a wolf in sheep's clothing, <laughs> but just trust me. What, like Little what Red about, Riding Hood. What about with... crawling off the stage and letting the cloud do everything? Yeah. Why do you have to have Todd and you? Right. You just said what you want to have happen. Right. Don't you have enough faith? But you're not supposed to tell God what you what want if... him to do. Yeah. Because that proves that you're not a true son. That's right. Son, you're not sons of <laughs> Tell God. Tell what you're going to do. Are you with me? No, we're not. No. So it says, I'm going to stand my watch. And this is what we've said over our elders. According to Habakkuk 2, those that stand in the tower to watch, to protect, to watch, to see what he's going to say. Okay, I have, a, I have an idea for in the comments. Okay, please. Everybody who's watching this. I want you to find some obscure passage in the Old Testament and make it a verse that pertains to you and your situation today and be as outrageous as you can. In other words, make a descriptive passage prescriptive. And you'll find that there's, I mean, I don't want to do it right now because we're the camera's going. Right. But take something and just claim out of the blue that this pertains to me right now in my church or my situation. Let's see how weird we can get with this. I don't know. I No, seriously, you'll find that... <laughs> Why did he take this verse? This is Habakkuk talking to God. You know, like uh, this would be roughly 2,500 years ago. How do we know it applies to him right now? He's saying it does. Why didn't he take some other verse? There's a lot of verses in the Old Testament. So pick one. Put it in the comments. I want to see what happens with this. <laughs> but I love that it says... In fact, when you put it in the comments, don't just put the verse. Say what it means. Give your interpretation because that's what he's doing. He's taking a verse actually just a part of a verse and he's saying it pertains to us right now and then he's going to detail about why it pertains to them how it pertains to them he says write the vision down and then get in a position and watch it doesn't say write the vision down and then begin to perform it and do it and work it and i think we get so caught up in, in the being doing puffed up. and we're on a treadmill of performance as a church doing a lot of i wonder things. why yeah because that's he what they do pushing them. yes we're in performance mode. Listen That's to because Todd White. you preach about performance. Yes, Todd White is constantly hounding people all the stuff they're not doing yet because right. he's doing it and he's setting the example. Right, he is in a concordance. He's a concordance. <laughs> and God's not involved. Come on. I, I, there's a part of me that loves the fact, you know, we had this plan to have signage today. I know we have some in the parking lot and, and I do have to, where's our marketing team at? Just our marketing team, just stand up. I know it's just a few of you. Just stand up, do it. Don't be shy. Why do they need a marketing right. team? Why don't they just have the cloud be the marketing yeah. team? Why don't they hey, just have the there's Holy a cloud Spirit? that's just been hovering over this church ever since they opened their doors and merged. I, 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 okay, I could be wrong, but I think churches in the past have had marketing in the past. They have. That's an old thing. So now why did they bring the old with the new? Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, dear. What happens? <laughs> Good Kara, point. Our marketing director was working on the website and everything. I got an email... Didn't they used to have websites in the past? They did. Those were old things. Oh, boy. Do they still have a website? They do. We just looked at it. Yes. Oh, hmm. boy. About three in the morning. So we are thankful for them. Yeah. This is not just like we get to come up here and preach. There's a million things happening behind the scenes. But there's a part of me. We wanted to have signage today and have all of this stuff. And, and you know, we just couldn't get it on time. We're still trying to figure out what we even want the logo of this house to be. Wow. To be honest with you, right huh. now we just, it just says risen. That must be really tough. He's so transparent. I'm so sad. That's really sad. They don't, you know what? They don't have a logo. You know what? Our church oh, finally got a, a logo. We got a logo last year. Yes. Well, they updated the logo. Yeah. <laughs> it's a nice logo. I just was like, oh, seriously, do we have to have a logo? Don't why? Right. I, don't, I don't even want a logo. I don't right. want a logo. Anyway. Nation. And. Part. If your church has a yo yogo, yogo. <laughs> if your church has has a logo, that's fine. I'm just saying that uh, shouldn't be something that you stay up until three in the morning about. Yeah. Anyway. Part of me loves the fact that the Lord's stripping everything down and. No, he's not. You just.
talked about all the millions of pieces to this thing. Yeah, that, that you're goes doing. on behind here. But all he's these stripping things. it all down because you don't have all your signage finished but, yet. I guess not, or the logo. <laughs> or the logo. There's or nothing but him. There's nothing but him. And the clouds in the background. There's nothing but him is not true. Right. He's on stage right now giving a speech in this giant building with all these millions of parts that he just described less than a minute ago. Right. But there's nothing but him. Right. This is what you call a contradiction. <laughs> I love the fact that we don't have signs plastered everywhere today because... That's because they're not done yet. Uh, we want the banner to be, God is here. <laughs> we don't have things to make you excited today for anything else other than his presence. This is what we have to offer. God's here. Gosh, what better offering do we have? Why didn't, wow. you, why didn't you just crawl off the stage like he said? We're only 20 minutes. Oh, man. We don't have a timer. No, we forgot the timer. This is going to be a long video. Yep. I, I just think he should crawl off the stage since he just said that the God... The glory will be there. Well, God is there. He just yeah. said so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe it wasn't God in the cloud. It was no, just were they the waiting, regular God. Were they waiting, though, for the glory to come because they went up the mountain... And now that the mountain's there, well, he said the anointing going, has to happen so that the glory can flood. They haven't ascended the mountain completely yet. <laughs> they forgot do, their boots. They're going to do that later. Okay. So again, I just want to reiterate, this is not about us telling you <laughs> what's coming up. This is about us getting in right position to follow, to see. The cloud. To run up the saying? mountain, to come down okay, the mountain with so the glory within me. No, not, the kingdom. Did, did he say there's, there's nothing coming up? Do we have no plans? Right. He's going to do that after he's done with this part of the thing. Yeah. He goes and tells on Wednesday night we got this and Thursday oh, well, we got well, that. Oh, you mean after the whole service? I mean, we haven't even... I know, 20 me. minutes. Go with me really quick to Exodus chapter 4. <laughs> really quick. Really quick. It's always really quick. Yeah, they don't have enough time you for scripture. No. And as I, you do, I want to make sure you understand, do we value a plan? Do we value having direction? Absolutely. But... But you it's just not, said you don't need a plan. <clears throat> right. You need to be positioned in such a way that you just are right there with God and he's going to tell you what's coming next. Okay. Okay, we're back. We had to take a break. And as you do, I want to make sure you understand, do we value a plan? Do we value having direction? Absolutely. But it's not so much us having a plan as much as it is us setting a table for the Lord. So the Lord can't show up at this church until they do a bunch of stuff. Which is called setting the table. Right. That's the name of his sermon. And then he's going to go to this <clears throat> passage in uh, Exodus chapter 40 about the tabernacle in the Old Testament once again. Mm -hmm. As much as it is us tending to him, I'm fascinated by Jesus. So they're tending to God. <laughs> I mean, really. That's weird. I mean, I want to serve God. We should want to yeah, serve God. Yeah, but tend to him. Tend to, like, what can we get you to, you know, like... I mean, God needs nothing from branches. us. Yes. <laughs> the guy eating grapes. Right. What can we give to I'm God? I'm Lord. Yeah. <laughs> cool me with your branches. <laughs> I, I, this is just really weird. It's weird. I don't, I don't even know exactly what to make of it. I'm pretty good time, at dissecting this stuff. The only time I'm, I'm familiar in Scripture with it being said that something or somebody was tending to God was, was, well, or, or Jesus after his 40 days. Yeah. The, the angels, angels tended, tended to him. him. Mm -hmm. They, they helped him. Um, also in the throne room, don't the cherubs, mm -hmm. they cherubim, it's cherubim. Yeah. The angels, they tend to God. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what he's referring to. No, he says we need to tend to God. Well, but, but I mean, maybe he's thinking that we're like the angels should also be tending God. I don't know. I just don't know why the Apostle Paul didn't mention this in his epistles to the church. Yeah, and, remember and, to attend to God. And Jesus showed up without all of this to the Apostle Paul. Remember? See, Paul didn't ha actually. Paul was persecuting the church, and Jesus showed up. Yeah. So he wasn't ready, <laughs> <laughs> but God just did it anyway. Hmm. He's adding stuff to what you need to do in order to get God to show up. Yes. He's adding to that gospel, that simple gospel message. So, which Paul says in Galatians. Galatians. <laughs> That no one should add a, or subtract. He never Let sat be down with his disciples and gave them his three-year ministry plan. Jesus never sat down with his disciples. Okay, this is a, a point that doesn't really help anybody. No, because Jesus didn't build a church. 
The disciples right. and Jesus had a relationship unlike any other relationship. And oh. we're, we're not trying to duplicate Jesus and the right. disciples today. But he, but he is. He is. He right. and Todd. Yeah, they are. Which so one they... is Jesus? Is it he or Todd? Who's the disciple? I don't know. And told them his daily agenda. Rarely, Jesus would tell them to meet him in certain cities, but the only thing he would say is, just follow me. Most of the time, they couldn't find him because he was hiding and sneaking most away from Most of the crowds. time. Most of the time, you couldn't find Jesus. The disciples didn't know where he was most of the time, according to William Hinn, the great wow. Bible scholar. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. Imagine if we adopted that in church today. Yeah, wow. Why, pictures why don't you do it? To see how anointed we are, but we ran from them because an empty room was more important. Why don't you do it? If you think the empty room is more important, why don't you do it? This is all talk. It is. He's so full of it. He's yeah, it's like, full of hot air. He's full of hot air. Right. It's sad. Because, sad hot air. Because this crowd, if you were part of a church like this, you know what it feels like. You're yeah. just so wanting to be part of this new exciting thing. Mm -hmm. He can say anything. We're going to do all this great stuff, and he can make all these great claims that are just ridiculous, and people go along with it. Right. Jesus ran. From crowds. No, His no, he, he didn't. didn't. Just a couple times we he were told. He tried to escape when they were trying to trap him. Right. Yeah, when they were trying to actually harm him. Right. But most of the time, the crowds came to him. And he was teaching and yes. he was healing. Oh, they never talk about him teaching because nobody teaches anything oh, that's to right. anybody. It's all mystical. Oh, boy. It's all anointing. Disciples couldn't find him and then he told them to follow him. But he never released a vision to them that was... Here's what our three-year plan is. He said, follow me, and then he gave them himself. No, he said, because they would ask him questions, and he would re return or answer their questions in parables, like, you know, the temple, you know. Well, the disciples got more information than the general public. Right. The parables were sometimes, this is a part of Jesus' teaching that people don't like to talk about. Yeah. But he would confuse the crowds. Yeah. And then when he got together with just the disciples I just read this the other day I don't have it off the top of my head but he, he would talk plainly mm -hmm. and the disciples would say thank you that you're talking plainly we understand what you're saying now and he and he basically didn't want the crowds to understand him because he knew their hearts they were just wow. there for getting the food they wanted to get stuff yeah well, yeah like after he fed the, the there's two times where they where they fed the bread did we mention that since we did that yeah was mark and then also in, you mean two different... Two different occasions. Oh, occasions, yeah. no. I would much rather have the Spirit of God than I would have a plan that says, okay, here's what Thursday is going to be all about. But no, they're God going says, to do Don't that. Don't worry about tomorrow because nobody knows what's going to happen tomorrow. I was on my way here today and I thought to myself, like, I really, this has been so crazy. I haven't even had time to just sit down and be like, what's happening right now? This matches what Todd said. We don't even know what we're doing or something like that. Remember in the last video mm -hmm. we did? That's not a good position for a leader of a gigantic church to be saying. Isn't that crazy? We don't even know what we're doing. And actually, I think there's probably more stuff that's going on behind the scenes to try to organize this right. than he wants to let on. But this sounds spiritual. You know, yeah, it Wow, does. it's just all happening by God. And we're just And a being bunch led. of different people involved in meetings and planning and marketing. And we're following God. We can't be led. Right? Because Jesus, Jesus yeah. said, follow me. Yeah, so, so they followed, Jesus. They, but he didn't lead. I don't get that. I don't either. Maybe I'm wrong. And on my way one. here, the Lord spoke and he said, oh, over he us, and this isn't just for me, but corporately, if you can mm -hmm. dream it, if you can dream it up, you're not, not big dreaming enough. big enough. Mm -hmm. Oh, we talked about that in another video. I don't yes. know if Potter I could have ever coordinated this. But you did coordinate it. Right. We could have never even dreamt this up. You because did. Because God wants to do above and beyond what you could ever think or imagine. Okay, that no. verse is not about dreaming up some stupid ministry no. thing that isn't really that What unusual. is it about? Do it's we a, have that? Do we have that? I don't have that in front of me right now. M&Ms. M&Ms are gone. <laughs> he must have eaten them in the break. Yeah. No, there was only a few left. Oh, okay. They were delicious. I don't need M&Ms. You know, we should have M&Ms sponsor this program. We should. We, we like, could make millions we of like dollars. We like mint M&Ms, and they're hard to find. If the people at the M&M's company would like to sponsor us <laughs> for a lot of money, we might Or just a bunch it. of free M&M's that are mint. Free M&M's actually would do it. <laughs> anyway. We're just being silly. Let's keep going. Yeah. Whatever, like we get so discouraged and depressed because we're so focused on tomorrow, but you've never lived tomorrow, but there is one who has finished it. 
And all he's saying today is, would you just follow me? Would you just look at me, get all of this stuff out of your way? What's I love up? prophecy and I love releasing the prophetic. But listen, we... But why? All these prophetic things that you guys always bring up are talking right. about what's coming in the future. <sighs> so why do you love it so much if right. you don't need it? Right. I mean, there are prophets, uh, prophecies in this world where they say things like... Um, Something about the present, like, you know, like right now, you need to be reassured that, you know, something. Mm -hmm. But most of the prophetic words are about what's coming. Right. So that's wanting to know the future, which he claimed he doesn't have any interest in. Right. He just wants to know right now, am I getting the cloud to show up or am I in the glory? He should be able to see it. Yeah. He could even get so set on the prophetic words over our life that we forget about the word. Oh, like you did this entire thing. <laughs> He's going to actually mention the Bible here in a way that, again, if people do this, it's it's actually more dangerous because you go, yeah, this guy really loves the Bible. Manipulative. Yes. Manipulative. You don't love the Bible when you misquote it over and over and over again right. or you use half a verse and you misuse that yeah, half a verse. Yeah, especially if the other half is like scolding you. Yeah. And there's 66 books here of God saying, just look at me, just look at me. God's saying, just look at me, just look I'm at me. I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> I'm, I'm God, here. I have 66 books. <laughs> and this guy's not even reading them. No. And when he does, he messes them up. And now yes. he's claiming that, you know, we should all be looking at our Bibles more. Why yes. don't you start by setting the example, Willie? Yes. Come on, I foreknew you before the foundation of the world to be conformed to me, not conformed to your purpose, but conformed to me. I, I, Pastor Tanner here. He's amazing. You're gonna. I'm gonna introduce you guys to him in a second. He says this amazing thing. He says, "Listen, if if you are looking for your destiny, if you how many of you are in Christ? Sorry, bro. I'm gonna butcher this. How many of you are in Christ? If you are in Christ, if you're in Him, you're in your destiny. Amen. If you're in Him, you're in your purpose. You're not. We're not going somewhere to a destination. Jesus is the destination. We're not." We're, what does that actually mean? Jesus is the destination in regards Or Jesus is your destiny. If you are a Christian, you already... Now, yeah. I agree you don't run for yeah. all this stuff. That, yeah, once you're in Christ, you're a new creation. Right. He's going, end, end of discussion. He's basically saying we shouldn't be doing all the things we're doing yeah. while he's doing the things that they do. That's right. That's that's my summary. That's your summary. We're not looking for the open door of our pinnacle of what we think Christianity is. Let me just get behind this pulpit and if I can travel and preach and have a church that I've accomplished something. Wow. This is not the pinnacle of Christianity. Pen. <laughs> Christianity <laughs> says that there's no open door. For He's being vehement. Vehement. With his withering hand. the one who is adored. <laughs> the withering He's the beginning form. and the end and makes him everything in between. <laughs> His withering fork. <laughs> Not withering hand. The withering fork is in his hand. <laughs> That's probably why he messed that up now that you mention it. There's a Todd White clip where he says his withering fork is in his hand. Oh, yeah. His withering hand is in his fork. <laughs> I've gotten a few words wrong, so I shouldn't be oh, okay. laughing too much. But This is all about building upon one foundation, <laughs> one revelation. This is vision. Is What is that revelation? Christ Jesus, the rock in which we build our house. Well, I thought, it was, about, all over the I thought it was about the cloud. Yeah, where is the cloud? It was all about getting the presence to show up. Yeah, but now no, it's the about, glory. But now it's about the rock Jesus. And it was about the, the mountain. Glory. And the mountain and the glory. <laughs> It's all about one thing. Just let that me, one let thing. Let me give you the list of that one thing. Come on. Stop What's gonna it. What's going to happen when we get into this month? There's a guy. Stop it. Who, who has been following Todd White around. And he does that. Yeah. It's the same guy. Either that or the guy who's been doing it has now. Has a tape recorder. No. <laughs> and he says he hits come on. So it's the right thing every time. No, there's a group of people who <clears throat> have just adopted this new. Come on. Come on. Well, I don't want to hear it. Instead of. We have no idea what to expect. Now everybody who's going to hear it from now on is going to be... Right, right. But he just talked about we don't have we don't know what to expect again. He's still on this expecting thing. He's the beginning and the end and makes him everything in between. This is all about building upon one foundation, one revelation. This is vision. Is What is that revelation? It's the Bible. It's Jesus, the rock in which we build our house. What's going to happen when we get into this mindset of we have no idea what to expect? See, part of me, and I know that that doesn't... 
So you need to get into the mindset of we have no idea what to expect and then something will happen but you don't know what it is and if you think you know what it is, well you're expecting and you ruined it. Like build churches because people want to know what's going to happen but what if we were a church that got released from that illusion of control that we don't have Come on. and said, I don't care what the plan is. All I know is that he's right there. If, are we going to have church this Sunday? We don't know. Like, what would, it, what would it look like? See, I have this crazy dream. I haven't even talked to the leaders about it yet. So he's going to mention all these things that don't make any sense, and he's not he, going to do them. Right. But it sounds but, like he's really on the edge, man. He's going out there doing stuff. Right. Because the leaders don't even know yet. Oh, yeah. Because God's probably showed them those things because they're so important. How much you want to bet they're going to have a service every Sunday just like they always do, just like every other church. Right. And Todd White's going to show and up. And pass to, the buckets. Yeah, to pump them up every so often. Pump them up. When the, when the numbers start to go <laughs> down, like, hey, hey, Todd. Yeah, where are you? Todd. Cincinnati? Let's get you over here. Yeah. <laughs> but what would it look like if we didn't just do the traditional thing because that's what you do? Well, that's what you just said you're not going to do. Right. He just said nothing, nothing old, new, old can bring it to this to new, new thing. Yeah. So he's saying what it would look like. Well, you're supposed to be doing that right now. Right. You know, service this day and this day and this. What if God said, I want you to take three days and just don't leave the building? Why don't you just do it? Right. Why don't you just all stay there for three days until you want to kill each other <laughs> because it's so dumb <laughs> and you realize what a bad idea it was. And then you can have your people question, maybe that wasn't God. Maybe that was just a really bad idea. And we thought we were being spiritual, but now that after three days... We have an idea that's probably not yeah, a good idea. Yeah, follow through with that, Willie. Security is like, please no. Like, what would it be like if we said, listen, this weekend, be with your families and rest? Like, what if we valued that above making sure we could pay the bills? Okay, value your family and being together and don't go to church for the weekend above actually meeting in God's house, right. not paying the because bills. Because meeting in God's house is really just about paying the bills. Right. In other words, if you don't have people there on a Sunday, you don't right. get your offerings and you're You don't out pay money. the bills. Yeah. But when actually scripture talks about... You don't meet to pay the bills. You meet in church Is it Paul that says there are some of you who have given up meeting? You cannot do that. It's Hebrews. We actually just read that. That's recently. right. Yeah. Don't give. Don't uh, neglect meeting as some have done. Yes. And Hebrews and he's was saying, written to Christians who were starting to dwindle from their faith. And it was written to encourage them, no, keep doing the things that you've done in the past. And keep meeting. And keep meeting together. And he's saying, what if we don't meet because we value family above it? That's what he said. Or he could be trying to say that, you know, hey, we think family is important. Well, of course we do. But it's not like the two are diametrically exactly. opposed. <clears throat> Actually, fact, going if, to scripture, I mean, going to church should be bringing the family together. Exactly. Because that is God's family. Because Jesus even said, Who are, who's my mother? Who's well, my brother? He even said that. This the church family, is like family. Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> Oh, man. What if people were trained enough in the spirit of giving? Because I have news for you. Revival is not just miracles, signs, and wonders. Do you know that in Acts, none of them had a need? So you know that one of the biggest marks of revival is there's money? One of the biggest marks of revival is that there's money. And he's basing this on that very early passage in Acts where, everyone where they shared. shared everything. Right. Which doesn't happen later on in the book of Acts. And Ever again. Yeah. The only time we hear people doing that are communes. Right. And, and places there, that they end up being... There is that the, the radical Anabaptist movement, the millennialists in okay. the 1500s, who were absolutely out of their mind crazy. I have a playlist on that. And um, they they take that one little passage where they decided to share everything and they had everything in common. Yeah. And they say, that's the only way we can live. Mm -hmm. And it's always a train wreck because pretty soon you find out, you know, we got this lazy guy who's taking all the food and he's not doing anything. And the person who's actually really productive is mad at the lazy guy and it's better off if they just in fact that's the history of um some of the original um pilgrims who came to america they mm -hmm. wanted to try to live that way and mm -hmm. they realized it was failing and they said you know what let's just all work on our own farms so that you're kind of motivated you know i'm hungry i'm gonna work hard <laughs> that's that's basically the way i'm cold yeah mm -hmm. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna build a fire <laughs> yeah yeah i'm not gonna wait for the other guy to do yeah. it yeah anyway but revival is not about having everybody share everything. Yeah. In fact, 
he hasn't defined defined and none of these people actually do define what a revival is that's right and and actually you can't because mm -hmm. it's not defined by the bible right so the only way they can define it is in the experience of whatever revival they think is the most important one that's a really good point in fact uh guys like bill johnson mike bickle they talk about uh, we don't know if we're going to do a, uh, hopefully we're going to do a video on um, John Wimber. We started listening to this and the only problem with it is that it, the audio is a little old. Right. It's from 1980. But he's saying we had these weird manifestations and I didn't know if it was of God or not. Right. And he couldn't find it anywhere in the Bible. In fact, the Bible seemed to speak against these weird manifestations, if anything. However, however, he looked back in the history of other revivals and he saw things that seemed to be similar even though they really weren't that similar. That's something. Yeah. So these people d define revival, number one, as the thing that has to happen. God wants it to happen, even right. though God only talks about an end time falling away. He doesn't right. talk about a great revival. That's right. And then they define it based on the experiences of whatever revival they think is the one that is important. Is important. Mm -hmm. no, one has, no one has needs because we're all humble enough to help each other and actually be family and say, listen, it's not just about like I come and sit in a pew and watch. How about if Todd White opens up his uh, $1.3 million mansion to let people live there? I mean, he might and be doing that the homeless people. He might be doing that. But I'm mean, yeah. just saying, these guys are getting paid really well. Yeah. How much are they willing to give up to f fulfill this thing that he's claiming would this be This criteria that yeah. has to happen that he's putting on the whole body of Christ. And they're not going to do it. They're not going to do any of this stuff. It just makes him feel good. It's Putting the burden way. on them. Mm -hmm. Right. But it also makes him sound super spiritual. No, you're not just a butt in the seat. God has anointed you to be a part of this family. God has anointed you with purpose. He's anointed you to be a part of this family? Yeah, not just a butt in the seat. That's what he said. But the truth is, these people are largely spectators. Oh, yeah. Just kind of like when you watch a football game and you Todd, say, hey, our team won. I mean, Todd White My has... team won. <laughs> My Todd team. White is my guy. <laughs> my team. My team. <laughs> we love our team. We love, our team. We love that stuff. Uh, this is my favorite. <laughs> um, this idea that they're all supposed to get involved, what's so irritating if you've been involved in this, and it's irritating for me to watch, these people have been told, oh, you got to see Todd White, man. He's the best. He's like nobody else. He's living it. He's doing it. He's got miracles, and he's healing people, and... Because he said so. So they build up this audience. And I mean, when Todd White is there, the camera follows him. He right. is the center of attention. And now they get this crowd of people and they're saying, hey, you all should be doing stuff. You all should be involved. You shouldn't be just. You're not just a butt on a seat. But they are butts in the seats. <laughs> right. That's the whole way this paradigm yes. has been. We, you know, he really didn't get through it. He didn't really talk more about the paradigm. The paradigm is everybody used that up. word, and there it went. Yeah. Well, the new paradigm is that Todd White's not going to be the new guy anymore because that's old. He, I mean, he's not going to be the old guy. He's the new. The new paradigm should be that Todd White will never be the center of attention ever again, because that's what they used to get to this point. But now that the merger took place, God told him that this is a new paradigm. They're gonna they're gonna meet the Lord in a way that's never happened before. Before, right? In this family, to go and touch the whole world. Oh, touch the whole world. You and got that on your shoulder like now. If we just said, Lord, we don't know what this is going to look like, but there's something exciting about the fact that we just don't know. It's exciting until two, three, four, five years later, and nothing has happened like they said it would. Then it's not exciting. It's frustrating. And you gave your life, and yes. you gave your house, and you gave your family, and you're left with nothing, and then you go back to strip it down and say, what do I believe? Yeah. And, and what do I have? And you go back to Scripture, and you're like, why did I ever stop going back to Scripture? Why did I fall for this? Right. Because I'm telling you, we get in the way so much, and we stop moves of God. No, you get in the way. Right. William Hinn, you are in the way. You right. don't know what you're talking about. You're a hack. You have no understanding of the Bible or of Christian theology. And so stop blaming the people that yes. they're in the way of this move of God that never is going to happen. It's been faked up to this point to a large extent, and it's never going to change from being this fake revival thing. And don't blame it on the people. So if you've been hindered by this kind of teaching and you felt like it was all your fault that mm -hmm. stuff wasn't happening, mm -hmm. it's not your fault. You know what? You're to blame for falling for it to an extent and not reading your Bible more. Right. But it's really the fault of leaders like this. Right. Well, and and that's true. When I was saying how... You know, you do have to look back and say, gosh, how did it, how did we get here? 
But you go back to scripture and say, well, we haven't been reading this. We haven't been, right. we haven't been sharp in this respect. Mm-hmm. We've been being fed here. Yes. We haven't been doing that. And We've been too willing to just say, well, he must know what he's up. talking about. He's, right. he's up there on stage. Somebody approved him somewhere. Yeah. By the he way. He seems nice. Yeah. We are talking more about some of that, that actual content in our uh, Patreon videos and the AGTV videos, which are the same, where we're going a little bit more into detail of our story and why we fell for things. So right. I, I know some of you have asked, can you go yeah, into more detail? Right. And we really don't want to on a public setting like YouTube. So that's just a little side issue. Because we're moving too much. We're moving too much. No, you're listening to this guy. Verse 34. Then the cloud covered the tabernacle of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. So he just flew in out of nowhere into Exodus chapter 40, verse 34. Then the cloud covered the tent of the meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. What does this have to do with Risen Nation Church in town? It's the cloud. So dumb. And Moses was not able to enter the tabernacle of meeting because the cloud rested above it. And the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud was taken up from above the tabernacle, the children of Israel would go onward in all their journeys. But, everyone say but. But if the cloud was not taken up, they didn't move. So visually you have a cloud. I just want to make sure that we understand what you're telling them to expect. How do you How do you even... Because they have a cloud. So this is right. now our instructions. Okay, where is... Are you going to... Are you talking about maybe moving these pictures? Is this guy If you move this you, picture... She's out of the way. I'm usually the one throwing <laughs> I mean, a fit. Seriously. It's so dumb, isn't it? You know, how... Where is the cloud? There is no cloud. There never will be a cloud. God no. does no longer... He but no longer can shows everyone up. say but? <laughs> I love this. Of course There's you like do. It's totally opposite of Vision Sunday. It's like... For the Nailing cloud of the Lord wall. was above the tabernacle by day, and there was fire by night in the sight. Everyone say sight and no. underline it in your Bible. No. Of all the house of Israel, which means that not just the leaders could see, but everyone was watching. What does that mean? It's, the way they this is a passage about an actual historical event that only happened one time in history. It's never going to happen ever again. And we are in the New Testament now. That's Willie. descriptive. You're doing a prescriptive yep. thing because you guys are so special. And, and none of this is going to transpire, and you're confusing people. You're harming their faith. Yes. They positioned the children of Israel. It surrounded the tabernacle. I'm so sick of hearing they positioned. So now he's going to tell them. Are you them, positioned? Yeah, you need gotta, to be positioned. Where's your position? He's going to do that just now. Are you now. sitting? Actually in the shape of a cross, and his glory was in the middle. And it was positioned ah. strategically in a way where we could all stand and watch. Yes. Kids would hear from their parents. The cloud's lifting. It's time to move. It's lifting. It's lifting. (laughs) He got that from his uncle. Yeah. Listen, what authenticated the tabernacle was the cloud that rested above it. Without a cloud, it was just a structure. Mm. Without the cloud, it was just a building. The cloud and the tabernacle were always together. It was the presence of God. Right. If they weren't, Moses had a problem on his hands. So? They only moved according to... Because now he's going to say that if they don't have a cloud, they've got a problem on their hands. Where's the cloud? There will never be a cloud. He's mixing a thing from the past with a thing that can't happen today as if it was going to happen today. And ex- you should expect it. Yeah. Because that's where you're going to church. Is this, this, is a, place. this is what a false teacher does. He's just making stuff up. To the movement of the cloud... And all the children of Israel did was they got in position. Yeah, that's the children of Israel. Did this you is read what that today part? Is, is we're going to get in positions. Like you're going to be here, and I'm going to be here, and you're going to be here, and we're going to watch. And it's going to be what like. What are they going to watch it's for? Pretend world. This is absolutely like. Uh, <laughs> they're going to have. They're going to have. Candyland. The the, they're going to have the pictures <laughs> come forward and then like be on cables and then come yeah, fly down. They should do that. They mm-hmm. Have little. Uh, There's the. We didn't tell you what kind of a cloud. Yeah, they should it just is a cloud. The marketing department could work. Yeah. <laughs> they have a fogger machine. And we're going to see what God is about to release and about to do. It says in Romans eight fourteen. I already said it. Those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Even Jesus Himself only did what he saw the father doing and only said what he heard the father saying. Like, imagine if we just made, valued that. Imagine if you valued the word of God. Imagine that. Right. Church. 
God said, God said, God said, God said, God said. No, he didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just talking this a lot. is what you're ignoring. You're the, the one Bible. talking a lot. Yes. And you like to hear yourself. That's talk. you. Projection. Is there fruit? Is there weight on your words? No, there's no God weight on your said. words. None. Like, we've got to slow down and listen. And I'm talking. people that tell yes. me every single day, God said this to me. God said this to me. God said this. She's begging to go outside. Okay, everybody. <clears throat> We took a break. Dog had to go potty. Yeah. Actually, she had to go poopies. <laughs> TMI. TMI. Yes. And then you just put some dinner in the oven. This is the longest video we've ever done. Yeah. And uh, we're going to keep going. Yeah, we'll see where we go. We don't give up. We don't have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> we just go. We just go with it. Maybe if we continue with that, there'll, there'll be a cloud that'll just show up. And well, us. there was the clouds in the painting you That's took right. from away from behind us. Yeah, you know, I took the painting that was at the bottom of a reflection. Everybody was saying, why is your painting upside down? So I put a painting that's right side up. There you go. <clears throat> God said this to me. Does God speak to us? Does he want to speak to us daily? Of course. But I'm learning something about God is that when it comes to destiny, it takes faith. And the just shall live by faith. So if God's just telling you every day, wait, 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 the wait. just by faith, don't we have that scripture verse? Yes. Uh, Do you have wait, it? Yes. You're marked? Yes. Okay. No, it's what tomorrow holds. What's the point of faith? What God says is look at me and love me. So he's claiming that if you're hearing from God every single day about everything that you need to know, there's no faith involved. Play it again. As, I interrupted. We as, need to hear the whole thing as, in context. As if somebody really was hearing from God every single day. If you think you're hearing from God every single day and he's telling you everything you possibly could need to know. That's called a mental issue. Yeah, every day. I, I gotta back it up just a tiny. I gotta back it up. Faith. So if God's just telling you every day what tomorrow holds, what's the point of faith? What God says is, look at me and love me. Where does God say that? And where does God say that he's going to tell you everything you need to know about tomorrow? Because that's what he's talking about. So Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But he says, if you're, th you know, it's going to take faith for you to know what God's going to tell you to st about tomorrow. So that shouldn't really happen because that doesn't take faith. It's such a weird mixture of things all going on They're at all the same wrong. time. Yeah, but the um, the overall idea is that Instead of going to God to find out about tomorrow, even though they claim that's important, you should go to God just to love him. It's just for my face. Just to sit there in the secret place. It's just to get into the secret place there with the go. Lord. And just, just yeah. uh, what, did, what did he say before? Tend to him. Tend to <laughs> Can I get you anything? I'm the shepherd. Follow me. I, I love the... So what, what that should point us to... It's great that he's saying that God is the shepherd and we should follow him. The thing he's ignoring, utterly ignoring, is you follow Christ through his word. Right. And where he has not spoken in his word, we don't need to hear him. Right. You know, uh, should I get a this car or that car? God doesn't need to tell you those things. You can look that up. You know, <laughs> it's, it's this overly spiritualizing kind of lifestyle where you think God is supposed to tell you absolutely everything. So right. you kind of pretend that he is telling you everything. And it just adds to confusion. Yeah, that, we, that's, we how I, that's how I grew up, too, yes. my family. And it's the biggest mistakes we've made in yeah. our adult lives came from that. Right. That actual uh, theological mistake. That is correct. That is correct, Alex? Alex. <laughs> I love the idea of sheep because sheep are just not smart animals. At all. Exactly. So all of the people sitting there should be completely insulted. I'm not sure. Let's see where it goes. <laughs> and they have no idea where they're going. Another sheep doesn't go to another sheep and say, where are we going? And the sheep says, under that overpass and through that valley and then up that mountain, I heard that that's the schedule for Thursday. He's trying to make the point that nobody does that if they're following Christ. And then he's going to go on to tell them all the plans for their new church, which you're not supposed to have. Sheep, if you were to ask a sheep, where are you going? The sheep would go, I, I, I don't know where we're going. I just know the shepherd's right there. And if I stay close enough to hear his voice and to watch him, 
as long as I'm following him, I'm safe. I heard Eric Gilmore say one time, he said it like this. He said, sometimes I think if we're, if we're sheep of his flock, I think. I knew it. I, I just had to look this up. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone while I'm supposed to be making a video. Yes. Uh, this is from Lighthouse Farm Sanctuary, June 17th, 2020. Five amazing facts about sheep. Number two, despite the popular belief that sheep are stupid, they are actually incredibly intelligent. They have very impressive cognitive ability, and just like humans, they form deep and lasting bonds with each other. They stick up for one another in fights, and they grieve when they lose a friend. They experience all of the same emotions that we do, including fear, joy, boredom, anger, and happiness, to name a few. In addition to being incredibly smart, they also have wonderful memories. They can remember approximately 50 individuals, sheep and human, for years at a time. Where did you get that from? It's a blog about sheep. Oh. Like oh. a farm. Yeah, I remember hearing that, that everybody keeps saying how stupid sheep are. And, mm -hmm. You know, we have stuff about shepherds in the Bible. It's good to know, but you're trying to add all this stuff by finding mm -hmm. out all this extra information that's not in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And you find out, oh, we were making all these claims <clears throat> when it may not even be true. Right. It's good to just stick with what the Bible actually says <laughs> instead of trying to add stuff. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he's leading us and he's walking and sometimes he stops to see if we just keep going. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Now you got me saying it. Stop it. So, does God actually do this? I don't know. It's not in the Bible, but he's claiming that it's true. And I think in church, we're like three miles trying to be ahead of him, and he took a right turn. And we think we accomplished something because people showed up. Listen, we could get a crowd at a Beyonce concert. <clears throat> That's a nine point. You can point. get crowds around sin. You can get crowds around anything you want to. Yeah, you can get crowds around Todd White. Right. Which is the only reason why you and your church exist. Your church exists. It's because of Todd White. Correct. Take Todd White away from this church yes. and it falls apart tomorrow. That's right. Hit the bar. You, you can just do something <laughs> cool on a street and a crowd would come. That's what Todd White the does. The crowd is not the win. It's did he come and is he still here? Well, why don't, cloud? why don't you get off the stage and see if it's true or not? Let's see if the cloud Because comes. right now, you're the center of attention giving a speech. I want to see the cloud. <laughs> Give me the cloud. Why are you the clapping? Holy Spirit, listen, like, we always ask the Holy Spirit to come, and, and that's a good prayer, but I think, where did he go? The prayer should be, Holy Spirit, would you stay here? Would you rest here? Would you inhabit inside of, of this? And burn yourself out of it that when people come, like it says all over the scriptures in Zechariah and Ezekiel, that Old Testament. there's going to be Testament. people, it says one person from, from ten nations, they're going to come from everywhere and they're going to grab the robe of just one and say, we heard God was here. I'm praying, God, mark this house with that banner of God. I heard he was there. I, like people coming in on wheelchairs. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And stretchers because they heard God was here, not... Why don't you actually do it, Willie? Why, why don't you, you just, just go to the hospital? Jim, why don't you just start healing people right now? You guys have been talking about this for decades. Right. Todd White has built his entire career on the fact that he heals people every single day wherever he goes. Right. Why don't you just do that? Oh, I know why. Because it doesn't actually happen. <laughs> right. You just make speeches about it. That's why. Go. Not good programs for them to attend and be a part of. No, no, no. Like, what if... What you mean if, like, like the program meeting? that's going on right now? This is a program. Right. We're going to have a speech at this time, and he's the one that's been designated to give this speech. Yep, and they, they passed the bucket around at yeah. another time. They had... They, oh, and they had Todd give a speech before the buckets were passed. Yep. And a mini sermon. But this isn't a program. No, it's not a program. No. Nothing's we planned. was a breakout of miracle signs and wonders. Do we want to go deeper in the word? Yes. But what happens when you begin Flippantly. to go deeper in the word? Everything begins to thicken in the anointing. Okay, it's all but, flippant. But you haven't gone deep in the word. And we haven't seen the miracle signs and wonders. But, Why do you keep saying it? But if you don't have signs and wonders. Yeah. Which they don't. No. Then he just gave the reason why. Because they don't go deep in the scriptures. <laughs> but he's not going to go deep in the scriptures. Why? Because they don't do it. Because they don't do it. Because they don't. That's, that's too not religious. what they do. They, yeah, it's, it's a religious spirit. He's going to talk about that later. Oh, that's why, that's why I'm, a, I'm a prophet. And all of a sudden, we're not just like becoming this academic, amazing church with programs, but we're a church where God's glory is resting. Yeah. Wow. How many of you want to see revival like we've never seen? Not... Like the dead coming back to life Oh, again. yeah, that'll happen. <laughs> Just do it, Willie. Proverbs 69, a man 
His heart plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. Psalms 37, 23 through 24, this is the New Living Translation. The Lord directs the steps of the godly, and he delights in every detail of their life. No. Though they may stumble, they will never fall, for the Lord holds them up by his hand. Okay, I've got six minutes to share our entire deal here. What have you been doing then? Six so listen, minutes to share the entire deal? Amen. They're going to set a table. We're going to get in position today. They're going to get in position. And you're not just going to be a, a church attendee. <laughs> deal? You're going to be part of a body that walks in power. Wow. I got, I got the glass. Amen. Amen. So if we're not all dripping, our leadership, with, with his presence, there's something <laughs> wrong with the leadership. So oh, this, is, this is for the previous one. Remember about the oil of Aaron dripping? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's not about Aaron and actual oil. No. In the actual historical... Bible, it's actually about what they're doing. Right. And the oil represents the fact that they're all going to be dripping with the anointing of the Holy That's Spirit. That's right. Which hasn't happened yet, but no. it'll happen. In fact, this is from about a month ago. I should check the newest video to see if they're dripping yet. I think you should. They probably are by now. You probably won't be able to. They're swimming. <laughs> They all got towels. <laughs> they can hand it a towel. Just like when you go to the locker room yeah. in gym class, they hand a towel now because they're all dripping. If we're not all walking in power, there's something that we have to do better. Whoa! Okay, so can we hold you accountable, Willie? Because I don't think that anybody will. This is what you guys all do. You say that it's going to happen. It doesn't happen. At least he's saying that we, as the leadership, should be held accountable. What are you going to do when it doesn't it's happen? Words. It's just words. It's just words. It sounds good. It's just words. Lip because service. this isn't going to yeah. be Sunday morning Christianity, 20 bucks and you go home. Yeah. No, no, man. Let's get them in and out. Let's yeah. be an hour, not nope. here. This, nope. We bless you. We love you. And there's a, literally a million churches in Texas that are an hour and a half. Literally. But this will literally. never be that church. Yes. You're better than all the other churches. Come on. We're not better than all the other churches. They're great, but we're just better than all the other churches. <laughs> We're going to offend religion at every turn. It's going to be the Yeah, best. religion. Until, listen, ah. until the Bible Belt is on fire with the purification of God and just dissolves into a crisp. Okay, we're done here. Yes, have, I can't take it anymore. Have you heard, I mean... Because of them, it's going to like burn the Bible Belt and it's to a crisp and they're done with religion. Wow. <laughs> This is the best church ever. I wow. Hope, I puffed hope, up. No wonder why he skipped over the, the puffed up, the part. Puffed up yes. part in in Hezekiah. Where's Lucy? Ha, no, Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Hang on, I'll get her. Lucy, I Can think get, she hid. Yeah, she's here's the agitation in our voices. Hey, so remember, I'm going to keep hounding you guys with this. We're so glad we're watching, but we really want to help you, and we can't do it one-to-one -one by answering every question. So there are resources. I have playlists full of uh, different topics, different leaders, and then I have uh, uh, recommended channels that I really recommend. That's why they're called recommended channels. There's a bunch of them with a bunch of people doing similar things to us. In some cases, doing a little different one way or the other, a different little twist to it or whatever. But we, we really believe in these other channels, and we want you to get as much information as you can. We're not the answer to everything. And then please do go to the Messed Up Church website. I built this website as a researcher blogger guy. For years, uh, hundreds and hundreds of hours of work before I ever started doing these channels. So there's a lot of good stuff there. And I'm not saying that to, to brag or anything. I don't make money from the website. It's just there. Um, but it's going to help you if you're looking for more explanations and more backstory and more about the cults or maybe about the New Age or more about uh, what is the New Apostolic Reformation exactly. I have all those questions addressed in various articles and resources on the website. So sorry it took me so long. You had to go track her down. Yeah, that worked out fine. So Lucy, little oh. Bobby Bob, okay. what about the humor? Oh, thanks. Thanks. Is this the best church oh. in the world ever? Oh. 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 Lighten things on fire. Yeah, it's lighten them on fire. Oh my God! Religion. Oh my God! Oh. So we have one mission here, and it's. it's oh. Oh. Yes. oh my goodness! Yes. Oh. 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 That's so beautiful. That's both. So, oh, the heresy hound has spoken has. yet again. Yes. Yes. That's you so, heard it here. Oh, that is so true, Lucy. Thank oh, you for sharing. That must feel us. good. Yeah. We should just howl for a while. I bet you we'd feel better. <laughs> Thanks hey. everybody for watching. I, I did you hear what I said? I did all that stuff that we normally do at the end. Except thank you so much. 
Did you thank everyone for? I wasn't here. Thank for them for for show for for their support. Oh and yes, for absolutely. watching. Yep, yep. And thank you so much for your comments. We are we, we really, are still really appreciate. We only it. started doing this Patreon stuff and even mentioning it <clears throat> occasionally over the last I think three months now. Yeah. And so we're really thrilled with your support, and we never want it to be a burden. We no. never want anybody to ever feel obligated. But if you really like what we're doing, and you want to support us, great. But that's as much as we're going to say because we have support and we we do want more i want to do this full time and we're getting really close to the point where i can do that because i want to make more videos i want to have more articles i want to do more with the podcast which has been kind of dormant now so that's why we want support not because we're you know but i i appreciate I, I, we, we really oh gosh yeah you're right the i people appreciate are so nice. your comments as well yes it really is helpful reading your stories of whatever you want to share and and what the Lord's done yep. in your life and where you've come from or how you're just getting out of it or how we can, God used us. I mean, that's, that's awesome. If we could say that God used us, that's yep. huge. And yeah. that's what we are doing this for. Exactly. We went through this stuff and yes. we kept thinking. Very painful and felt very much alone. Is it possible that we could help other people right. from our experience so that they don't have to maybe go through quite as much or even get out of it at all? Or sooner than we did. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so that's our anyway, goal. Anyway, that's what I like to say. And we're done Thank now. Thank you. Longest video ever. Ever. Thanks for sticking with us. Yes. That was amazing. <laughs> the fact that you're still here is great. Because people have said after an hour and a half yeah. video, oh, we, we could have watched more. Well, now we'll find out if they actually did. And we hear people saying, I can't take it anymore. Yeah. I'm out of here. That's I feel like too. saying, okay. That's fine. <laughs> At least you figured that but out. But I'm not going to break this up into two videos. Oh, you're not? No. It's All right. One, it's going to be really long, and it's going to be great. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank Talk you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It's lifting. God, then God, then God, then God.